Uh, now, my name, my name is Brother Jesse. You're not my brother. Yeah, if you don't feel comfortable calling me brother, I understand it might be awkward. You can just call me Saint Jesse. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Don't complain about being a minority if you abort your babies. You see, God doesn't want you to sin. God doesn't want you to kill babies. God doesn't want you to get drunk. God doesn't want you to get high. God doesn't want you to sleep around. God doesn't want you to be a sinner. The Bible says, go and sin no more. That's, uh, that's God wanting the best for your life. God wants what is good for you. God wants what is beneficial for your life and that's why he gave us a law that's why he gave us the Ten Commandments that's why he says go and sin no more you're sitting right now dude this is all about what's love. your problem this is all about love. This is a... don't turn it off. hey why don't you move to North Korea if you don't like free speech move to North Korea why don't you become a communist why don't you, you know, there's soldiers who have died for free speech, and you want to be a little tyrant. There's... Hey, 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 hey. That's not the way to do it. And what you're preaching... Move to North Korea, pal. Hey, stop, stop. We're America. Yeah, this is America. We have freedom of speech. Soldiers died for freedom of speech. You can get your own bullhorn. Back up! 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 Welcome to America. We have freedom of speech out here. If you don't want to hear the gospel, you don't have to listen. You're gonna die! You're gonna die! You're gonna die! You're all gonna die! And after death comes the judgment. We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds done in the body, whether they were good or evil. We will all appear before the judgment throne of God. We will all appear before the judgment seat of God. And you have to give an account for every beer that you've ever guzzled. You have to give an account for every joint you've ever smoked. You have to give an account for yes. You have to give an account for every whore that you've ever slept with. And it will be terrifying, horrifying, petrifying on judgment day for you sinners. Yes, it will be a horrifying horrifying day because God is horrible. God sends the wicked to hell forever and ever and ever. And that's where you drunkards are going to go if you don't repent. Most of you people just want to get drunk, get high, get laid. Yes, that's the condition of your sinful heart. You just want to get drunk, get high, get laid. Uh, I like you, I like you. And the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Death. 
when you're just wanting to get drunk, get high, get laid, you are carnally minded. Your heart is on the flesh. Your mind is on the flesh. No, 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 no. Keep your hands to yourself. No homo. No homo. No homo. homo. I don't hug strangers. I don't hug strangers. Did you grow up without a father? Why do you need male affection? Why do you, why do you need male affection? Don't touch me. Give me a hug. No, no, no. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. No, this, this personal space. Personal space. You're in my personal space. No, no, no. I don't need male affection. I don't need your male affection. Did you grow up without a father? Why do you need male affection? You know what? No, no, no. BYOB. BYOB. Bring your own bullhorn. Bring your own bullhorn. BYOB. Bring your own bullhorn. You know, that's the problem. Sinners have no self control. You need self control. Control yourself. You know, self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to give you hugs and kisses, boys. I'm not here to give you hugs and kisses. I'm here to give you the Bible. I'm here to tell you the truth of the Gospel. I'm not here to give you hugs and kisses. I'm not here to be your daddy. I'm here to tell you the Bible. I'm here to tell you the truth of God. I'm here to call you to repent. 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 I want to see you come to Jesus Christ. I want to see you turn away from your sin. I want to see you sober up in this life before you end up sobering up in hell. Yes, in your drunken stupor, you're going to stumble into hell. You better wake up before it's too late. You better wake up before God judges your life. I bet you guys watch Harry Potter too. Yeah, you got time for Harry Potter, time for Game of Thrones, time for porno. You got time for Saturday Night Live. But no time for God. No time for the Bible. No time for Jesus. Hey, did you go to college? Because Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the dead. Mohammed didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. Jesus did it, and I know him. I've met him. I'm test. I'm testifying. I'm a. Te I'm. I'm here to witness. I know him. He. he yes. He walks with me. He talks with me. And I tell you what, he's been answering my prayers for 17 years now. Yes. He's answered so many prayers, I can't even tell you all he's done because you'd be jealous. You would be jealous all the prayers God has answered. Yes. Jesus Christ is alive. I know him. The greatest sin of this campus is not homosexuality. No. The greatest sin of this university is not blasphemy. Okay, can we can we can we get to what it is? Yes. The greatest sin of this campus is not masturbation. Oh come on! Hey, 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 The greatest sin. The greatest sin of this campus is not loving God. Not loving God. You love your porno, you love your masturbation, you love your Game of Thrones, but you don't love God. Jesus said, if you love me, Keep my commandments. You know, you people, uh, you have no thoughts of God, don't care about the Bible, don't care about Jesus, but you have the most perverted thoughts, the most perverted ideas. Our society is doomed! Doomed! America is doomed! Unless we repent. Doomed! Unless you turn back to God. 
And that's what the devil does. The devil puts a disguise on sin to make it appealing, and you have to rip the mask off. And when you see sin for the killer that it really is, you say, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to go near that. I don't want that in my life. I don't want that in my family. I don't want that in my mind. I don't want that in my heart. I don't want sin anywhere near me. And when you see God's commandments for what they are, protection for your life, a means of blessing your life, you say, I want that. I want to know it. I want to walk in it. I want to meditate on it. I want to do it. Well, What's your question? Uh, hey, nobody kills more black people than black people kill each other. No, serious. Serious. Black on black crime needs to stop. Black on black crime needs to stop. Yes, black people kill more black people than white police officers kill black people. It's true. It's true. I'm not scared. It's true. I'm trying to help you guys. I'm, I'm trying to help. I want to help the black community. The, the black on black crime needs to stop. And the problem in the hood is not the white officer. The problem in the hood is the gangster rap. Yes. The problem in the hood is the gangster rap. Gangster rap promotes black on black crime. The, the gangster rap promotes drive-bys in the ghetto. Drive-bys in the ghetto. Yeah. If you really want to help the ghetto, it's, it's not about the white police officers patrolling the neighborhood. It's, it's the gangster rap philosophy that you're pumping into your heart and mind. That's the problem. I'm from the East Coast. Who you be? Where you from? Who you be? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I know. I know the ghetto hood life. I'm from the hood. Yes. I'm from the hood. No, it's true. I I was raised on welfare. Yes. Yes. And we be raised on But listen, listen. Listen, my ancestors were slaves. Yes, they were. No, my ancestors were slaves. See, I'm Greek. We were enslaved by the Romans. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. I'm not going to demand affirmative action from Italy. But yes, we were enslaved by the Romans. I'm also Irish. We were enslaved by the English. I'm also, I'm also English. We were enslaved by the Vikings. So I can understand. Listen, I can relate with the struggle of the young black man. I can relate to the struggle of the young black man. My ancestors were slaves too. My ancestors were slaves too, but it's time to get over the past and uh, look for the future. Time to take responsibility for your life and stop blaming other people. Now, let me make at least one point about this. Slavery was not about racism. S slavery was not about racism. No, the Irish were slaves. The Greeks were slaves. The English were slaves. Hey, the Jews were slaves in Babylon. The Jews were slaves in Egypt. No. Uh, slavery in the ancient world was not about racism. The theory of evolution is not that old. It was not about racism. It was, slavery was about wars, wars. Yes, like in Africa, tribes were going to war with other tribes and the tribe that lost became slaves. That's why there were slave markets in Africa because Africans were selling other Africans. 
That's why the British bought slaves from Africa. That's why the Americans bought slaves from Africa. It was in part Africa's fault. The tribal wars, they were enslaving each other. If you're going to get angry at America for your history of slavery, get angry at Africa who sold you. Yes, get angry at the Africa who sold you. I Listen, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that there's an unjustified hatred for the white man. There's an unjustified hatred for the white man. You know, listen, white, the white man has contributed greatly to the advancement of civilization. We brought Native America out of their tribalism into a republic. Thank you, white man. Thank you, white man. Yeah. Hey, thank God it was a white man who uh, outlawed slavery. Yeah. America ended slavery uh, 200 years ago. They still have slavery in Africa today. Africa has not ended slavery like the white man in America has. Thank God for the white man. We're leading in the advancement of good culture and society. We outlawed slavery in England. We outlawed slavery in America. Yes. Stop. Um, that's what I'm saying. There's unjustified hatred for the white man. And hate is sin. Hate is sin. There's racism in America today coming out of the Black Lives Matter movement. Racism for the white man. What? Yes, hatred and racism for the white man. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. Listen, the idea of the Republic came from the Greeks. Philosophy came from the Greeks. Advanced mathematics came from Archimedes, a Greek. Hey, the iPhone came from a white man. You know, the automobile came from a white man. I'm just saying. You don't have to be so angry and bitter against white people. We've done a lot of good. We've done a lot of good. Yes, sir. Hey, I love, uh, I love the brother in the hood. I love, uh, I love white people, black people. I love everybody. I love everybody. And I'm trying, I'm trying to help. Uh, the black man have a better perspective on history, on the world that we live in. I think when you have a victim mentality that you just blame other people for why you don't have what you ha uh, sh think you should have, you need to get over the victim mentality that holds you back. And so I just go out into the streets, to the highways and the byways, like the Bible says, and compel them to come in. And I praise God, I've seen drug dealers repent, and I've seen Satanists repent, I've seen homosexuals repent, I've seen atheists repent. Just the other day I got a message uh, on the internet from a man who said, I was raised uh, basically an atheist, I wasn't raised in church, no influence from God at all, but I started watching your YouTube videos and I've, I've committed my life to Christ after listening to your preaching. Uh, hey, hey. Uh, Here comes the hate speech! The hate speech here! This is called deep Your hate speech! <laughs> Nothing intelligent hey, to say! Ho, ho. Hey, preachers have got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Hey, preachers have got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Hey, preachers have got to go! You sound like an anus. Hey, I am one. I know. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Hey, preachers have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Hey, preachers have got to go. So the Bible says in Psalms 7, 11, that God is angry with the wicked every day. 
The Bible says the wicked will be cast into hell and all nations that forget God. America is on the highway to hell. Then why are you in it? Well, I'm here to save it. You're here to save it. How are you going to save America? Are you going to stop the wars? I'm going to start by preaching the Bible. How am I going to save America? By preaching the gospel. By telling you sinners to, to repent. Oh, I'm not here to save you from your financial debt. I want to see you saved from your sin debt. What sins? How do you know I'm sin? I know you're a sinner. I can tell you're a sinner. It's so obvious. Tell me how I'm a sinner. I can just tell that you're hostile towards God. You're hostile towards the preaching. You're hostile towards the Bible. You're a hostile sinner. I know you're a sinner. Yes. You're wicked. You're opposed to the truth. You love darkness rather than light. Yeah, you hate the gospel. You hate the truth. You oppose it. You mock it. Yeah. You know what? You're saying, yeah, you're agreeing. You know what sins you have in your life, and God knows too. I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if this man was a masturbator. Oh shit! I wouldn't be surprised at all. That would not surprise me. Oh, and you're a potty mouth. He just used foul language. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm also a military veteran, and I served in this country to listen to little bitches like you tell me what I can and can't do. So if you want to be confrontational and tell me what I am doing, hey, then you can get the fuck out. This, don't get violent. Like I said, this is I'm not, not the, getting violent. This is I'm not the ghetto. Like you just said I was this is doing. the university. Let's control your emotions. Don't be like a woman. Control your emotions. You know, practice some self-control, like the military. You're touching me. I'm not touching The you. military teaches discipline. Have some discipline. But now you're acting convicted. Like maybe masturbation really is your sin. Maybe I hit the nail on the head. God knows your sin. God sees your sin. And the Bible says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The Bible says, God is calling all men everywhere to repent because he's appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness. So do you masturbate? No, I'm not a masturbator. That's Hallelujah. That's problem. Hallelujah. Figured it out. When you want to judge other people based on their merit and not on their religious beliefs, then I'll have a real conversation with you. No, masturbation is sin, sin, sin. Jesus said, if you so much as look at a woman with lust in your heart, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Well, first, I'd like to just make the point that we need more than ever before. We need a move of the spirit of God in this country. Because what I see when I look out into the world and I see through the media, through the news, and just through experience is the spreading of a demonic, sinful spirit in our country. That sin is on the move. Sin is rampant throughout the universities, throughout the colleges, and on the streets. And we are losing an entire generation. We are losing our entire culture and our society. And if ever we needed the Holy Spirit to move to produce sanctification and righteousness, it's now. Because the devil has not uh, taken a break. The devil continues to march forward as it seems the church is getting quieter and quieter. America, I fear, is on the brink of reprobation. And what is reprobation? When the Spirit of God gives up on you because you've resisted Him for so long and you've grieved Him for so long and you've had such a revelation of the truth, such an experience of the light that you've resisted it and you've grieved it. And the Holy Spirit moves on and gives up. Hebrews chapter 6 talks about those who have once tasted and have seen and have, have experienced the glory of God. 
this intimate relationship with God. And if they shall fall away, it says it should be impossible to renew them unto repentance. Well, I think Hebrews chapter 6 can be applied not just to individuals, but to nations. That America as a nation has experienced the light of the gospel. We've experienced a great moves of God. What other nation has had revival, a history of revival, like America has had? Talking about hundreds of years of moves of God, hundreds of years of revival. Where is it today? You can't find it in America. You could find it in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. Where is it today? Is it not possible that America has grieved the Holy Spirit of God that we don't see sanctification in America as a nation or righteousness in America as a nation because we have grieved the Holy Spirit of God? And so America as a nation, I think, is on the brink of reprobation if it's not already there. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You must leave your sin behind. Come out of your homosexuality. Come out of your drunkenness. Stop your potty mouth. There's children around, you filthy sinner. You need a new heart. You listen. You probably listen to filthy music. That's why you have filthy language. You're the reason we're out here. You need a new heart. The Bible says, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. You need a new heart. Your, ho your heart is filthy. There's a potty in your mouth because there's a sewer in your heart. No, your heart is full of curses. Curses, curses. No, no, no. Well, I know, because you're intolerant. You're closed-minded. Open your mind to what the Bible has to say. Stop being so closed-minded, potty mouth. Stop being so closed-minded. Can you ask them to leave? Hey, welcome to America. Freedom of speech. What if you, if you don't like free speech, move to North Korea. If you don't like free speech, why don't you move to China? Welcome to America. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder. Yeah, you prefer communist China over the liberty of America. You know, you should have your citizenship revoked. You should lose your citizenship. So the Bible says that God is calling all men everywhere to repent. So I'm out here today to be the mouthpiece of God. I'm out here today to tell you the word of God, to tell you that God is fed up with the sin of this university. God is fed up with the sin of America and it's high time that you repent. Any of you homosexuals, you need to stop it. Any of you drunkards, you need to stop it. Any of you liars and thieves, adulterers and fornicators, you need to stop it. Society is being given over to a reprobate mind. You think it's okay to be gay. You think transgenderism is okay. God is giving you over to destruction. God is giving you over to a reprobate mind. Society is on the brink of total annihilation. Yes, society is on the brink of destruction. Transgenderism, homosexuality. Hey, what happened to the dodo bird? They probably all turned gay. What do you think happened to the dodo bird? They probably became a bunch of homosexuals. Well, you know, homosexuals cannot reproduce. Yeah. So if you don't reproduce, you go extinct. Maybe the dinosaurs all turned gay. What happened to the dinosaurs? Maybe they all turned gay. You can't have babies if it's not male and female. Yeah, why do lesbians have ovaries? 
My, my information comes from the Bible. Epistemologically, I get my revelation from the mind of God. If you don't have revelation from the mind of God, it's just your finite opinion versus someone else's finite opinion. I'm standing on the words of prophets, on the words of the apostles, on the words of the Son of God himself. And Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. Interpret that. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. I, I planted a seed in your mind. You will remember us all day long. You will rem you, you might dream about us tonight. Yes, I've planted the seed into your mind. We're getting somewhere. So the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, we need to record on. everything. Yeah, we will. Yeah. You can keep preaching. I got so, so well, we should record the conversation. So what, I, what, I'm like, so what I'm saying is we've received some complaints from passers-by who feel that you are upsetting them. Well, she, I know who it is. She's over there. She's, she, she said, F you, which I think is hate speech. And I said, I will not have sex with you. And she said, I'm calling the police. So if anything, she's out here causing a disturbance using foul language. And we received a different... Well, she's the one who told me. She's the one who told me she's calling okay. the police, yeah. Oh, would you but, rather not? I'd rather you didn't. You have the first amendment right, right to me. Yeah. Yeah, yes, okay, ma'am. fine. But... Just asking you. Okay. But I, I told her to move back to North Korea, because in America we have free speech. Okay, so again, there are people that are being upset by some of the um, yeah. phrases and, and some of the language that you're using here. I'm asking you not to do that and not upset people. To, to, to do what? Well, to, not, to not upset people. Well, I can't control their feelings. Yeah, that's impossible. I, if, what, yeah, but listen, what you're saying is upsetting me right now because I have freedom of speech and you're telling me I don't, so that's upsetting to me. No, you're yeah. putting words into my mouth. That's I'm upsetting me. No, I, I'm feeling a little. Yeah, you need to call the police. He's upsetting me. Yeah, I'm feeling a little upset. Okay. So your chief of so, police has our attorney letter. Okay. Do it. Okay. You can great. listen to him so, speech, and you can you can uh, as long as you want. Yeah. We're on the public side. So, so do you mind if I take a look? Oh, absolutely. Can you send that over? So. Yeah, I have the right to uh, preach so even is, things that upset people, because that's on them. I have the right to say things that they might find offensive. That's freedom of speech. We that's why control their emotions, sir. the Constitution is intended to defend offensive speech that people want to shut down. That's why we have a First Amendment. If only likable speech was protected, we wouldn't have a First Amendment. So you could suggest that I not offend people, but you can't tell me I. I'm legally wrong if someone is offended. I'm offended by gangster rap music, but they have the right to say it. Yeah, gangster rap music is very offensive. Okay, so at the same time, at the same time, I'm concerned if people tell me that they're feeling harassed by you. Well, if I followed the, people around, yeah, we don't follow people. people can keep walking. Nobody is forced to stay here. If I was following someone, that'd be harassment, yes, but sir. I'm just making my offensive beliefs available. And if they want to stop and listen, if they want to keep walking, it's on them. So that's not that's not harassment. And like I said, I don't. Want, I I'm not stopping you exercising your First Amendment rights. Let's make that very clear. Well, thank but you. I, but what I do want to do is caution you against any behaviour that might be interpreted as harassing. Sure. So I, please don't harass people yeah, well, as they go about if their you business. you can give well, a list of words you're not allowed to say and sign your name and badge them at the bottom, that would really help, yeah. us help us out. Just maybe a list of words and phrases yeah. we're not allowed to no, say. We record you're everything. Think, you're an intelligent gentleman, I, so I think you know what words might be. Uh, no, I'd answer. like the list from you. Yeah, we need a list. We, we're not so, that intelligent. We're, we, not, actually, we're not, yeah. no, we don't know what you, don't know what, you know, we okay. don't comprehend what you're telling us. Yeah, you I need to write it down and sign it. Sign it with a list of words and but we record everything so any false accusations of harassment will defend in court if need be. That's why we record everything. And we might be followed by students, actually. That's happened on some so, campuses. So you, but we don't you know, care right. if they follow us and we don't okay. press charges on them. So if you they sent, assault us, sir, we will press charges yeah. and that's why we film. So you sent this letter to uh, the chief of police in Princeton? Yes, that's and I'm in the city of Princeton, correct? 
So you are in Princeton, however, this is Princeton University yeah, over here. Correct, and um, we don't go on their property. Yeah, we stay at the crosswalk. You're just on, the, on, on the crosswalk, that's fine. You're yes, not, sir. You're on, you're on the sidewalk. Yes, sir. That's yes. absolutely fine. And what I'm saying to you is, though, please be mindful whilst you are exercising your rights. Be mindful of people's sure. feelings as well. Please don't upset people. Well, don't I'll upset. do my best, but I can't. Uh, I make they no might guarantees. Get upset. No guarantees. They might, they might get upset. Okay. okay. So if. If we're not breaking any laws, I'd like to just get back to it. Name, sir? Uh, my name is Jesse. And what's your last name? Morell. M O R R E L L. Jesse Morell. You, can, and you, you can, represent you, who? Open Air Outreach. You can you can find me on YouTube. I, I for about 15 years I've traveled the country preaching on over 100 universities and colleges. My first visit here at Princeton. Uh, of course, I've preached at Yale. Very much so, yeah. so uh, but yeah, you could Google me. I've had to do some free speech lawsuits, unfortunately, so that'll probably come up in any Google search. Uh, but I'm just a sidewalk street preacher. It's who I am. It's what I do. Thank so. you, Mr. Morell. I really appreciate your time. Thanks uh, for explaining okay. that too. Okay. God bless you. So, I'm told we have might have offended some of the sensitive feelings of some of you college snowflakes. I've been told to watch my words least I offend maybe any of the whores on campus or you know watch my words least maybe I offend any of the homosexuals on campus I was advised to watch my words least I offend the feelings the sensitive feelings of maybe any of the transgender people on campus and you know how sensitive these people can be they sometimes commit suicide and we sure don't want that then we'd all be sad if these people committed suicide so I'm gonna try and watch my words cuz I just really don't want to offend any of you uh, sodomizing transgender whorish people on campus the Sermon of Jesus Christ on masturbation. You're a potty mouth. You're not a Christian. You're, you're a potty mouth. You. You make Christians look bad. You make Christians look bad. You need to become homo no mo. Hallelujah. That's the glory of the gospel. You can be homo no mo. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm just spreading the love of Jesus today. I'm spreading the love of Jesus too. You're spreading the love of Jesus. No, you're cussing like a gangster rapper. No. Jesus had a sermon on masturbation. The Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Jesus said, if you're hand causes you to sin cut it off well the context Jesus said if you look at a woman with lust you commit adultery with her in your heart so if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out and cast it from you. Jesus said, it's better to go through life without a hand or without an eye than to be cast into hell with both. Yes. Just look at most uh, churches. Now you see in the book of Acts, they, they said, uh, we must give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That's not what you find most churches doing or most pastors doing, giving themselves continually to prayer. The prayer meeting is the smallest meeting in the church, if they have one at all. The street ministry team doesn't exist in most churches. You have worship pastors in churches, but no street preachers in churches. 
I find street preachers in the Bible. I don't find a worship pastor. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I can't find it. But you got worship pastors in every church in America. But you can't find a street preacher in every church of America. You want to know how filthy, how corrupt American Christianity has become? Uh, homosexual is more accepted in churches in America today than street preachers are. Yes, you'll have more churches that participate in the gay pride parade than you can get churches to go out to the streets to preach the gospel. That's how vile, how corrupt, how filthy American Christianity has become. Poor, wretched, miserable, blind and naked. Vomit in the mouth of God. Would you like a taste of this milk, milky chocolate? No, I, no don't you I'm sorry, I already have a wife who makes me meals. She has, she has the chocolate. Mm -hmm. I know. Many women try and tempt me with chocolate. Please, I'm already taken. Keep your treats to yourselves. You're not, you're not going to win my heart over with chocolate kisses. Is that a racist thing? Yes. I know America has turned its back on God by and large. Just by our voting record. People who vote for baby-killing Hillary. She supports Planned Parenthood. No, it's... No, it's planned murderhood. That's what it is. They do not encourage parenthood. They encourage murderhood. And that's how I know America is on a grease slide to hell. Yes, a grease slide straight to hell. A million and a half aborted babies a year. Do we have any baby killing whores in the crowd? Oh. Yeah. If you let's just get one thing straight. Let's get one thing straight. If you are a baby killing whore, you're on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell. 1.5 million babies aborted a year. That's 171 per hour. That's more than one a minute. And you doubt this? No, I don't doubt this at all. Yes. If you have ever had an abortion, you have baby blood on your hands. You're a baby murderer. You slaughtered your own offspring. You're worse than the Nazis. Yes, yes, listen. Let's be reasonable. The Nazis killed other people's kids, not their own. If you're having abortion, you're killing your own. You're killing your own child. Made in your image, with your facial features, with your blood flowing in their veins, and you slaughter them like a pig. You slaughter them like a beast of the woods. Yes? Child sacrifices to the altar of selfishness. Child sacrifices to the altar of convenience so you can keep on whoring around. What if someone is sick? Hey, I have a good question. What if someone is sick and if they were to have the child, they would die? There are many. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. Listen. What God intended for mankind was that we would be a loving race that love each other, that would lay down our life for one another. Jesus said, no man has greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends. It, I would give my life for my kids. I would give my life for my children. If it was my life or theirs, I'd be gone. That's what God intended. 
if, if, if having that child sacrifices your own life, as a loving mother, you should willingly do it. Willingly do it. That's the example Christ gave. As wicked as you are, as hell deserving as you are, Jesus spilt his blood for you. He gave his life for yours. But we're a selfish race that kills its own children. You kill yourself on drugs, kill yourself on alcohol, kill yourself through sexual promiscuity, kill your children through abortion. Kill the economy by voting for Democrats. I mean, what is it that you don't kill? What is it that you don't kill? What's your question? Yes, you people live like animals. You're no better. You're no better than the beasts of the woods. All right, what did Jesus say about masturbation? I'll tell you. Jesus. Jesus said. What? 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 Jesus never masturbated. Jesus never sinned. Dude, hey, so this is my topic of like of, of interest. I like to nut. So this is like you can ask uh, you can ask him. That's actually how we met. Was through nutting. Nutting? Yeah, nutting. It's that that's sounds ho that sounds homo. What does nutting mean? N nutting. Jesus said about masturbation, any of you masturbators, you better listen up. I know you have to. Let me tell you, Jesus said, if you even look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Any of you looking at women on your iPhone, any of you involved in sexting, that's sex through text. Any of you involved in sexting? Yeah, looking at women with lust is adultery in the heart. Hold on a minute, I'm almost done. And Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Ah! And cast it from you. Jesus said, if your right hand causes you to sin, then cut it off. Ah, and cast it from you. Okay, Zach, Zach, Zach. All right, he's got to go after the sign that was stolen. Run, brother, run! You're going to miss it. All right, so in the meantime, in the meantime, can I ask two questions? All right, what's your question? All right, first of all, what do you think of Gotham? Well, Gotham's pretty dark, demonic, a culture of death. No, no, death is not cool. You're gonna die! Yes! So, the second question. The second question. Uh, so, we're not allowed to, like, lust after women, right? So, like, do 2D women count? Am I able to look at anime kids? Is that fine? You... Am I also gonna get me to hell? You masturbate to cartoons? Oh, no, I'm just asking. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Cartoons? What? Dude, He's talking about animated pornography. What? What is wrong with you people? Now, if you do it God's way, see, if everyone lives God's way, lives righteous, lives sober, lives sexually pure, one man plus one woman equals no STDs. One man plus one woman. I know that's advanced mathematics for some of you. One man plus one woman equals no STDs. It's always better to do it, do it God's way. God's way is the best way. It's a good song. God's way. You do it the devil's way. You know what pornography leads to? Erectile dysfunction. Yes. 
Yes, your brain starts to, just Google it. I Googled it once. When you are overindulging your sex drive, your brain compensates by creating less dopamine receptors in your brain because you're out of control. Your body is smarter than you are. Yeah, your body, that's why you get a hangover. That's why you throw up that alcohol. Your body is smarter than you are. And your body says, this is poison, let's get it out, and you vomit it. Well, yes, when your brain creates less dopamine receptors, you get erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Uh, dopamine receptors in your brain. That's why That's why these perverts go from softcore porn and then that's not enough. Then they go to hardcore porn and then that's not enough. Then they go to a uh, homo porn, child porn, bestiality. Bestiality. How many of you have ever seen sex with animals? Well, okay, let's not go on to that. See, I'll skip this part. I, you almost raised your hand. I said and you didn't know if other people were going to do it. You didn't want to be the only one. You didn't want to be the only one that raised your hand. Sorry. Go ahead. Hold this real quick. Hold on. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to get that off. He's got to get his You know, uh, perversion leads to more perversion. That's what happens. Hey, sir, are you free to do, do you want to be on? Are you free to talk eventually? The actual practice of the thing. Now, I, now I am, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name, students, is Saint Jesse. Okay, who canonized you as a saint? Jesus Christ made me a saint. So Jesus talks to you personally. I talk to Jesus today. What, what did you say? No, 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 no. The Bible was written no, to, to living saints. Yeah. What yeah. miracles did you perform to gain your No, no, no. A saint in the Greek, it's hagios. Oh, it means right. holy. No, we're not holy. Christians. All Christians are saints. If you're not a saint, you're not a Christian. To be a Christian is to be holy that by faith in Christ. Yeah. The word saint in the Greek is hagios. It's the same word, same word as holy. Be holy. Be a saint. This is a continent. Listen, there's only two types of people in the world. They're sinners and they're saints. Sinners are going to hell. Saints are going to heaven. Now, do we have any atheists in the crowd? You're an. You're a Satanist. You probably smoke cigarettes too, don't you? Just, yeah. I'm just saying, you're full of bad choices. You're full of bad choices. Worship the devil. That's such a bad idea. But uh. Yeah, atheism is the height of foolishness. Uh, you have the signature of God in every cell of your body. Who do you think wrote the genetic code? That, that's right, Jesus. Jesus is God. God made everything through Jesus. And uh, you have this uh, chemical language in your DNA. This chemical vocabulary that written in code for protein synthesis. And so it's this, it's intelligent information of protein synthesis. And the only known cause of intelligent information is an intelligent mind. So you are proof that there's a God. Anything finite requires the first infinite cause. So everything is proof of God. We couldn't be here if there was no God. So don't be an atheist anymore. Stop it. Just acknowledge, acknowledge the obvious.
Acknowledge the obvious. Something else I want to tell you. The best news of all. Jesus Christ has come back from the dead. Yeah. Jesus Christ has come back to life. He's at the right hand of the Father. I'm here to give you my testimony that I've met Jesus. I met him. Yeah, I've met him. I know him. I know him. I have a personal relationship with him. I, I pray, Jesus. You get on your knees for him. I sure do. I pray, Jesus. And he, he hears, he hears my prayers. He answers my prayers. I, I have so many answered prayers. If I told you everything Jesus has done for me, you'd be jealous. No, I can't. I don't want to provoke you to jealousy. I don't want to provoke you to jealousy. He's answered so many of my prayers. You, you wouldn't believe all that he's done for me. It's unbelievable. But I know he's real. I know he's alive. I met him. I know him. I talk with him. I walk with him. And he changed me. And he's only one prayer away. He's only one prayer away. You can know Jesus. Now, God doesn't hear that prayer. He just ignores that one. Oh, the Bible says if you have sin in your heart, God doesn't hear your prayers. So, I have good news. You can have your sin which are many, you can, you can have your sin forgiven. But the forgiveness of God is conditional. Conditional. God does not forgive everybody. You are negating No, no. If God forgave everybody, there would be nobody in hell. God does not forgive everyone. But he did make forgiveness available for everyone. Forgiveness is available to you. But in order to receive it, you have to, you have to repent. That means change your mind about sinning. I, like I said, I have not always been the saint that you see today. I, yeah, I, I'm Saint Jesse. I, I have not always been the loving man that you see today. I, I I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it. I used to speak hate speech. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Yes. I was a gangster rapper. Can I get your mixtape? And uh, that's, uh, that's hate speech. Gangster rap is hate speech. But. I, like I said, I was a drug dealer, street fighter, gangster rapper. It's true. I, I even got my neck slit in a knife fight on my neck. See? Starts in the back, goes all the way to the front. I was living the thug life. But when I wanted to be right with God, I knew I needed to repent. You cannot be a, a heaven-bound, drug-dealing Christian. They don't exist. You cannot be a heaven-bound, street-fighting Christian. They don't exist. Just like you cannot be a stripper for Jesus. Now, they... Apparently, there is a group called Strippers for Jesus. 
apparently. And they have prayer meetings before they go dance on the pole. But they are not real Christians. They're fakes. They're phonies. They're frauds. Because a real Christian is someone that has turned away from sin. Forsake your sin. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you cover your sin, you'll not prosper. But if you confess your sin and forsake your sin, you'll find mercy. The Bible says, let the, it's a proverb. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord our God and he will abundantly pardon. The Bible says, repent of this thy wickedness that the thought of your heart might be forgiven you. So I cried out, God, God, save my soul. God, change my life. I never wanted to sin again. I had a heart of repentance and I tell you, I went down a sinner, I came up a saint. You better repent while you're able. You better repent while you can. God has given you only a short amount of time in this world. What is your life? If it is even but a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Your life is a vapor here today and gone tomorrow like the flowers of the field. You are dying, every one of you are dying, every one of you will die. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. You will all appear before the judgment seat of God. You will all appear before the judgment throne of God, and you'll have no excuse for your sin. You look really enthralled by her dancing. I'm just. I'm, I'm trying to listen to the words. I'm trying to understand what they're ranting. You know, you need to fill your mind with the word of God, not with gangster rap music. All right, you know what? You know, she's a whore. You got me. I'm gonna fill my mind with the word of God right now. I'm gonna go grab some Bible verses. There you go. That's a good idea. You know what? It is what you put into your mind influences your heart. Your choices are affected by your ideas. And when you're listening to the lyrics of these musicians, you're corrupting your heart with immorality and ungodliness and bad attitudes. You ought to fill your mind with good things. Read the, read the Proverbs every day. Read the book of Psalms. Read the Gospel of John. Fill your mind with good things. The Bible says, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is holy, think on these things. No wonder our culture is so doomed. Look at the music. Look at the music. You know, you can tell how people will act based on the music the culture listens to. I'm just a normal Christian. I'm trans-denominational. Transdenominational. I'm trans. I'm transdenominational. I transcend a lot of these denominational differences. I preach. I preach in Baptist churches, Assemblies of God churches, Church of God. Wow, you are a preaching. I've even preached in an Anglican church and also in a Mennonite church. So I am transdenominational. So you're saying you like men tonight? He said he has got no Have you ever sinned as a Christian? I have. To my, to my shame. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's, that's the good first yeah, question. Wait, so, so why do you hate if hate is bad? I don't get it. Tell me about black Hate, black hate black. is good. We need more hate. Is that why you voted for Trump? Tell that to the families of 50 so, people so. in Vegas. Well, that was bad hate. That was bad hate. Hey, 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 hey. Got, oh, thank you. We, we, need, we need holy hatred. Hatred for sin. S-I-N. S-I-N.
God does not forgive everyone. If God forgave everyone, nobody would go to hell. God has conditions in order to become forgiven, in order to get saved. No, Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Those are conditions. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you will perish. That's a condition. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. That's a condition. Condition. You couldn't, you could not afford me. You could not afford me. God offers me eternal rewards. I don't preach for money. Yeah, salvation is unmerited, but it's not unconditional. If you want the pardon of God, the Bible says you need to forsake your sin. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord our God, and he will abundantly pardon, the Bible says. You see, the fear of God is a good thing. You, you ought to fear God. The fear of God has kept me from so many sins. You know, the problem with like the doctrine of uh, like a once saved, always saved. That, oh, if you just say a prayer and believe in Jesus, all your future sins are now forgiven. No matter how you live, no matter what you do, you're safe and secure. The problem with this teaching is that there's no fear of God left. Uh, the, Jesus said... Fear God. Why? Because he can destroy body and soul in hell. But if you tell people there's no possibility of you going to hell, you can't possibly go to hell for your sinning, then the fear of God is, is removed. The fear of God has kept me from so many sins. Uh, the fear of God has helped me to overcome so many temptations, knowing that if I go back to that life of sin, no matter how appealing the devil's making it appear, no matter how pleasurable the, the devil makes it look, I know if I go back to that life of sin, in the end of the road, I'll be in hell. And I said, I just, I, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So sin, the fear of God has kept me uh, from sin. And consequently, staying away from sin has been a blessing to my life. And so the fear of God has brought great blessing to my life. You know, like Jesus uh, said in the parable, of Matthew chapter 18, the unforgiving servant, the master forgave his servant of a massive debt, but then the servant did not forgive his fellow servant of a minor debt. And so consequently, the master was full of wrath and revoked the pardon that he had given. And uh, the man was sent to, uh, to prison uh, like he was originally going to. And so the man lost his forgiveness. He lost his salvation, you could say. Uh, the whole parable, Jesus. And then, then he, he summarized and said, So will my father do to you if you do not from your heart forgive one another. So he's teaching a conditional salvation and we ought to Jesus is saying we ought to fear God that God would do the same thing to us if we don't forgive one another so fear is a good thing domestic violence that's you guys this is for you you're gonna want that domestic violence, domestic violence is wrong. that's abortion abortion is domestic violence domestic violence is wrong Ab abortion is domestic violence. Abortion is child abuse. Abortion is child abuse. Abortion is worse than the Holocaust. Have you had an abortion? Good. Don't do it. If you have an abortion, you're worse than the Nazis. Yeah, the Nazis didn't kill their own children. And so here we read, it says, And they went out and preached that men should repent. 
See, the Great Commission is that we go out to them. Not that we invite them into us, but that we go out to them. Inviting people to church, that's great. That's lovely. That's dandy. But that's not the Great Commission. The Great Commission is, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means everybody. We have a message for everybody. We're supposed to go out. I fear many churches in America today have become modern day catacombs. We come here to escape the, you know, the opposition, escape the persecution, and, uh, and they've just become like tombs for dead people. I remember one quote from, you know, churches are full of dead men preaching dead sermons to dead people. I think that describes a lot of churches in America today. You know, churches become like tombs. We're this is not uh, a, a, a tomb for dead people. This is supposed to be a boot camp for soldiers. And we're supposed to get trained to go out and to witness and be a light in our community. Because if you, if you don't witness and spread the gospel in your community, we will lose it. It's been lost and we're, we need to gain it. You know how much chlamydia is walking around here right now? We've become a society of whores and whoremongers. Our society is on a pathway of self-destruction. And unless America repents, America is doomed. America is doomed unless you repent. So you better get right with God while you're able. You better get right with God while you can. You better put down your beer and pick up the Bible. Put down your beer and pick up the Bible. Yes, STDs are commonplace in our society. If you're having premarital sex, you're a whore or a whoremonger. Yes. No wonder we have so many broken homes. So many of you grew up without a father. So many of you are single mothers because we've become a society of whores, a society of whoremongers, and it's the destruction of our society, the destruction of our culture, the destruction of our civilization, and it can't stand. You keep aborting your babies, turning to homosexuality and fornicating, and our society is doomed. Doomed! 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 Our society is doomed unless you repent! 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 So the Bible says that God is calling all men everywhere to repent. That means you, sinner. God is calling all men everywhere to repent. That means you, sinners, over there. God is calling you to repent of your sin today. You better get on your knees and cry out to God. You better get on your knees and cry out to God. Cry out to your maker and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The only reason you're not in hell right now is because of the mercy of God. The only reason you're not in hell today is because God is being merciful to you. Don't test the mercy of God. One day, you're going to die. You're all going to die. And then the mercy of God is over. Then it's game over for you. You only have this life to get right with God. You only have this life to repent. And as wicked and hell deserving as you are, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, shed his blood for you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, spilt his holy blood for your unholy soul. And the only hope you have is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and is calling you to repentance today. The only hope that you have is to be born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Because if you live as a drunkard and die as a drunkard, you'll be judged as a drunkard and sent to hell as a drunkard. If you live as a fornicator and you die as a fornicator, you'll be judged as a fornicator and sent to hell as a fornicator. And trust me, Jesus hung out with whores. That's why I'm here today. That's why I came to this place today. You don't have many virgins walking around out here today. Most of you girls are cheaper than prostitutes. You give it away for free. Most of you girls are cheaper than the prostitutes. You don't even charge five bucks. You just sleep with any guy you're attracted to. Spread your legs for every Tom, Dick, and Harry that turns you on. 
I tell you what, there's nothing worse than a diseased vagina. Oh, what a horrible thing that is. A diseased vagina. You don't want one of those. You don't want one of those. The Bible says a whore is a deep ditch. A deep ditch. Full of STDs, mind you. You don't want to fall into a ditch of STDs. That's what you do when you sleep with a whore. Oh, America needs to repent. The Bible says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Every day that you're a sinner, every day that you sin, every day that you're a drunkard or a fornicator, you're under the wrath of God, the anger of God. You're a disappointment to God. You are a disappointment to God. You're a disappointment to Jesus Christ. A disappointment to Jesus Christ. You know, stop being a sinner. Stop it. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Yes, you need to put down your bottle and pick up the Bible. You need to be a homo no mo. That's what you need to do. You girls over there, you need to be homo no mo. I know a man who can set you straight. I know a man who can make you normal. I know a man that can get you over your male phobia, your irrational fear of men. Jesus Christ can save you from your perversion. Jesus Christ can save you from your wickedness. So what we need to do as Christians is to be bold in our faith, to share it as we see society around us crumbling, as we see our culture around us perishing. We have the light that can change the community. If our culture, if our society is in darkness, whose fault is that? We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be a light onto the darkness. So if our society around us is in darkness, it's our fault. And if you're not shining the light, then you're part of the darkness. There's only one option, you know, or two options. You're part of the light or you're part of the darkness. So we have a light to shine. So I started going out to the streets. First, I started at the parks, going out to the bus stops. You know, there's crowds of people there. It's a public property, and they need the Lord. So I would go out, and I would preach to them at the bus stops. And then I heard about the nightlife, people that would go out to the bars and clubs, and there'd be long lines of people still sober trying to get in. And so I could preach to them in front of the bars and clubs. And, and I saw great fruit from that. I went out first time in front of this club. And uh, three people came out of line and started uh, amening my preaching. I was preaching across the street on a staircase. And three people came out of the line and started amening the preaching. And come to find out they were uh, backsliders. They had backslid. They were church kids who wanted to go out and, uh, you know, go out to the club for the first time. They had never been to a club before. But they said, after hearing your preaching, we're not going in there, they said. We're not going in, in there. And who knows what would have happened to them in there? Who knows what would have become of those? There was two girls and a guy. Who knows what they would have gotten themselves into that night? And so there we were, 1 o'clock in the morning, praising God out on the streets. They, they joined the street ministry team. And they began singing, singing hymns in front of the club. Of course, later that night, some people almost beat me up. They, they, they were so drunk, they were chasing a guy, and he, he, he turned the corner, and then this group of guys came, and they saw me. They thought I was the guy they were chasing. And so, well, what am I supposed to do? How am I going to get out of that? So all I, all I knew to do was to preach to them. And so I, I just started preaching to all these guys, and they said, oh, he's not the guy. You know, they, they could tell right away, oh, he's not him. And so uh, I've seen great fruit. So I'll go from the parks and then go to the bars and clubs and then uh, started going out to the universities and the colleges. Now that's a battlefield. You know, even, it used to be I thought, you know, the streets were more dangerous than the campuses, but things have changed. Now it seems the campuses are more dangerous. Now these students, they're so quick to resort to violence and rioting. It's a very a hostile because these universities today are just brainwashing these students with liberal uh, values and liberal culture. They, they've been so uh, immoralized, if that's a word. If it's not, it should be immoralized. They've been immoralized. 
indoctrinated with immorality. And you go out onto a campus and I warn them about the consequences of sin. And I warn them about the judgment of God. I warn them about the wrath of God. And I warn them to flee to Christ for salvation. And uh, it's just like you see in the Bible. There is persecution and there are souls who are saved. That's the two things that should happen. You should see persecution because if you're not making a difference, the devil will leave you alone. But if you're stealing his children from him, he will persecute you. So there is persecution. I've, you know, I've dealt with it for the past 15 years out on the streets and campuses. But there's also fruit. There's salvations. People who come to the Lord. So the Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord our God and he will abundantly pardon. That's what the Bible says. Let the wicked forsake his way. God is abundant in mercy. God is abundant in grace. And all he asks is that you turn from your sin. All he asks is that you repent of your unbelief, of your self-righteousness, of your pride and your arrogance. Can you show me where I can find I'll tell you what, if you seek God, you will find him. Every time that I have sought after God, I have found him. If you seek, you will find. If you don't find him, it's because you don't seek him. You don't seek him. Why would we want to seek something that tells us only that our friends and family are going to hell? What That's if it's true? That's not particularly true? appealing in case you haven't noticed. In fact, it's kind of funny. I don't know how you intend to convince a bunch of young people that your beliefs, which only... God is a righteous and holy God. He opposes all sin. He's the enemy of all sin. He damns the wicked to an everlasting lake of fire. But he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sin and rose from the dead. And I've met Jesus. I know he's alive. You haven't met Jesus. I know Jesus. He's alive today. He's alive and well. He? Hallelujah. I use a little Jesus in my life. He's, he's here and you, you hate tell him. tell him to go talk to the president. He's in my heart and you oppose him. Oh, he's in your heart. So if we, yes. like, if we took that out, could we like... Je <laughs> God became a man and we killed him. God came down and we killed him. We killed Jesus Christ for the crime of telling everybody that we should take care of each other and get along. We have a tendency to do that to people. Martin Luther King Jr. Jesus God, Christ Jesus. is alive. That's the greatest news kind of that you could ever hear. He said gay people are wrong. And what Jesus said, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined onto his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Hey, did you that's what Jesus said. A man will leave his father and mother. That's male and female. He shall be joined unto his wife. Again, male and female. And the two shall become one flesh. Marriage and sex is for the opposite. Sex, the union of male and female in marriage. So the Bible says... Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm here to tell you the good news of the gospel. Because of your sin, you deserve hell. That's bad news. But Jesus died for your sin and he's alive and he changes lives. When I cried out to God, I cried out to Jesus. I was born again. I became a new man. I was touched by the power of the gospel. I was touched by the power of the Holy Ghost. I got a new heart and a new mind. I became a new person. I began to live a new life. The sin that I used to love, I began to hate. The righteousness I used to hate, I began to love. The Bible, the Bible was written by 66, uh, or well, 66 books, 40 different authors. Prophets, they were Jewish. They were prophets. They were apostles. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. What do you have against white men? It said the Bible was written by white men, like that's a bad thing. 
homophobic pieces of shit. That, the, 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 you think that's what the apostles were? You're, yes. you're a child of the devil. You're full of blasphemy. Yes, you're full of blasphemy. Yeah. We finally agree on something. Yeah, you're a Satanist. We we agree. An atheist is just an undercover Satanist. Yeah. The Bible says, He that sins is of the devil. He that sins is of the devil. If you got sin in your life, you're at war with God. You're in allegiance with the devil. If you got if you're sinning against God, you're joining the rebellion of the devil. So the Bible says. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ can take a homosexual and make him normal. Jesus Christ can take a feminist. Jesus can take a feminist and make her a submissive woman. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can take a drunkard and make him sober. He can take a liar and make him honest. That's the power of the gospel. I've seen it. I've seen homosexuals go straight. I've seen feminists submit to their husbands. I've seen liars become honest men. It's okay when the Muslims preach about submissive women. But of course. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to submit to authority. That's the problem. You have no authority over me. You know, this generation is so rebellious. Despises all authority. That's why we got these riots against the police nowadays. Riots against the police because you guys have no respect for authority. You don't submit to God. Don't submit to the police. Don't submit to your husbands. You probably don't even submit to your fathers. Exactly. Exactly. You didn't have proper authority in your life. You guys need to learn submission to authority and start with God. Submit to the authority of God. Sin hurts people. See, when you fornicate, you leave broken homes behind. When you fornicate, you hurt people. Yes. Sin hurts people. Well, only the first time. After that, it's pretty much a problem. No, no, no. People are turning their back on God because the, the church is not a strip club. Because the church doesn't serve the alcohol that you love. Yes. I'm not the reason you don't want to go to church. You don't want to go to church because there's no pole dancers there. Because we're not playing your gangster rap music there. It's because you're a bunch of sin-loving God-haters. Sin-loving God-haters. You love your sin. You hate God. You hate God. The Bible says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. You need to go from being a sin-loving God-hater to a God-loving sin-hater. That's what it means to repent. To repent is to change your mind. Change your mind. Change your purpose of heart. Change your actions in life when you repent. We need a bucket. Somebody get a bucket. What's your question? Okay, so you see that this is very... This is awesome! Hey, listen, if if I don't help the homeless on campus, who will? Who will? If I don't tell you you're going to hell, who will? Who will? No, I'm not here to give you what you want. I'm here to give you what you need. Yes, what you... This is so effective. This is so great. This is the best way to reach people. This is amazing. I love it. I love it. In fact, this is so great. I'm going to be out here for hours. Hours. 
Yes. Well, let me see. How many of you? How many of you like to get drunk, get high, get laid? Okay. How many of you like to get drunk, get high, get laid? All right. Well, then, then you're all going to hell. You know, and I go out and I, and I preach and people, uh, of course, we have critics when you preach. And I emphasize much on the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. Because America has become so foolish, so stupid, so sinful. It doesn't even have the basis of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. You have to start at the fear of God. And people say, well, why don't you emphasize more of the love of God? Emphasize more of the cross of Christ. Because America has heard it. America knows it. I'll ask the crowd when I'm out preaching on the streets or on the campuses, how many of you believe God loves you? How many of you believe Jesus died for you? They all raise their hand. They all raise their hand. They all believe it. They've all heard it. Well, how many of you, I ask, how many of you fear God? How many of you believe you're going to hell for your sin? And all the hands go down. And so you have to start with the fear of God. That's where I heard when I was locked up and I was in prison and I was living in sin and I had no knowledge of God. It was the fear of God that started it. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. When you have a Holy Spirit filled minister, he will preach the fear of God. Which is the beginning of wisdom. Now in America, we have national holidays. Christmas is a national holiday. What do we celebrate? The incarnation of God becoming a man. God taking human form. We celebrate it as a nation. We have Easter as a national holiday. What are we celebrating? The resurrection. They know about God becoming a man. They know about Jesus in the manger. They know about Christ rising from the dead. They know about the empty tomb. They know it. And they don't care. They've heard the gospel and they've rejected it. It's not like in times past we have a, a pre-Christian nation. Now we're in a post-Christian nation. And the nation that has heard the gospel and has rejected it is certainly harder to reach than the nation that's never heard it at all. So we are living in a post-Christian nation on the brink of reprobation. And Lord, we need your spirit to move like never before. And the Bible says the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day that you choose to be a sinner, every day that you choose to be wicked, you're under the anger of God. Every day that you choose to be a sinner, you're under the wrath and judgment of God. Every day that you continue on in your sin, you are heading to the everlasting lake of fire where the Bible says the wicked will burn to cry and gnash their teeth. You're not lesbians, are you? Oh, uh, lesbians. Yeah, you're, you're going to go to hell lickety split, if you know what I mean. You're going to go to hell lickety split. You know why God gave you ovaries? To be impregnated by a man. Yes, do you know why your vagina lubricates when you're excited? To be penetrated by a man. That's why. Have a good day. Yeah. Have a great day. Stop denying who you are. You're a baby making machine. Just live up to it. Live up to it. You know, God operates by uh, synergism, God operates through men. The uh, Apostle Paul said, I have begotten you with the. Uh, the gospel of truth. I have begotten you, he said. We are co-laborers with God, the Bible says. God uses men, and God searches for a man. Not just for a preacher, but for a Holy Spirit-filled preacher. We have preachers all throughout this country. We have preachers all throughout this nation. And America's going to hell faster than ever. We've got plenty of preachers in the country who, who they don't preach and emphasize sin or righteousness or judgment to come. They won't mention hell. They'll be on national television broadcasting to the nation. 
And they won't mention simple Bible terms like hell or sin or repentance. It's all this positive uh, motivational speaking. Oh, God's will for your life, your best life now sort of a thing. You know, ministering to the carnal, ministering to the worldly, not ministering to the eternal, not ministering to the matters of the soul. No, we don't just need preachers. We have plenty of preachers. We need less preachers. What we need is Holy Spirit-filled preachers. And I like what Finney said about when he, when he felt the, 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 really, the power of God leave his ministry and he would set aside time for prayer and, and for fasting. And I know in my, my own uh, experience of ministry that, you know, if you can just keep running along, running along, fighting and fighting, but if you don't set aside that time for prayer and for fasting, yeah, the anointing, the unction, the Spirit will leave. The, if, if the gospel's like an arrow, it's the Holy Spirit that's the arrowhead. The Holy Spirit gives the point to your message to pierce and to penetrate. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible says God hates all workers of iniquity. Yes, God does not accept you as you are. What is this supposed to accomplish? I'm here to preach the Bible, the Word of God. These students don't even know what the anus is for. I thought you're here to be educated. You think it's okay to be gay? Yes, it is okay to be. Gay. It's not okay to be gay. You, well, you get prolapsed rectum when your insides become your outsides. Yes, your bowels start falling out. Ah! Ah! Homosexuality kills people. Hey. Control your emotions, woman. Control your emotions. This is Princeton. Let's have an intellectual discussion. You're so emotional. Emotional. Hate. You know what hate speech is? Gangster rap music. I bet you're okay with that. Yeah, you're fine with hate speech called gangster rap. You're a hypocrite. Typical liberal. You probably get your news from The Daily Show. You probably get your news from Jon Stewart. Or Colbert. Tell anything about me? I bet I know all about you. I bet you're a CNN watching Hillary voter. I I know all about you. Yes, hey, I do. You're probably okay with porno too. Yeah, typical liberal. See, you're so wicked, and God hates it. No wonder you're upset. Yes, no wonder. Oh God, don't do it. I just saved your life. You have no idea. You came this close. God was about to strike you down. I just saved your life. Why would you do that? You have no idea. You were this close to death and I intervened. You should thank me later. Thank me later. Oh, God strikes your genitals with HIV. God strikes your genitals with gonorrhea. The judgment of God on your genitals. God, God judges the sexually immoral. Yes. Why do you think homosexuals die from a gay disease called AIDS? Yes, which is now being eradicated. It is not. It is not. It mutates. It changes. It's a killer. My parents study HIV. What's wrong with homosexuality? Homosexuals give each other injections of HIV. Injections through the anus. Injections through the rectum. They inject each other with deadly diseases. Oh, it's wicked. It's wicked. No, Homosexuality, wicked. it kills what people. Homosexuality is a hate crime. Oh, no, you won't. if I was out here chanting F Trump, F Trump, you'd be fine. I'm out here preaching the Bible and you're all in a tizzy. No, you're not I'm, you're I'm not preaching not. the word of God. No, you're not. The Bible says Please the God. wages of sin is death. God says, God says let there be hate. No, you probably God. protest in Black Lives Matter. What is that accomplishing by your own standard? I'm out here to protest sin. S I N sin. It needs to stop. Yeah, sin hurts people. Well, get the sin, get the sin out of your life, and that'll help you. Stop being a homosexual. That'll help you. No, it won't. Yes, stop being a lesbian or a transgender. That'll help you. Really? What am I? Am I straight? Am I gay? Uh, well. 
I know I can't say I don't want to publicly embarrass you. I know what your secret sins are and so do God. Oh, I know. I know what your secret sins are and so does God. I don't want to publicly embarrass you. Oh, if I were to say your sins, if I were to say the sins in your heart, you'd be so humiliated. You'd never want to show your face on campus again. I am too loving to do that to you. I, I know, I know. I have the inside knowledge. I know. Yes, I know the sinfulness of man's heart. The sinfulness of your heart. You are such a devil. You are such a devil. Yes, you're a hell-deserving sinner. You deserve it. You're a hell-deserving sinner. You deserve it. Hey, I'm not here to win a popularity contest. I'm not running for president. I'm here to tell you the truth of God, the word of God, like it or not. Like it or not, love it or hate it. You sinners on campus need to repent. You sinners on campus need to repent. Especially any of you Hillary voters. Oh, any of you Hillary voters need to repent. She's a uh, Hillary. Hillary's a baby killing whore. She's a baby killing whore. You probably think it's okay to have an abortion, don't you? You're so wicked. You're a baby killer. You're worse than the Nazis. Yes, you're worse than the Nazis. The Nazis didn't kill their own kids. You're so wicked. You're so wicked. Yeah, the Nazis are good compared to you. The Nazis are saints compared to how evil you are. You want to support the killing of your own offspring. You're a neo-Nazi abortionist. You're a neo-Nazi. You want to? Yeah, well, you should know better. Then stop being so evil. Stop being so wicked. Yeah, you support a Holocaust on babies. No. Yes, no. you support a genocide on babies. No. I, yes, no. abortion is evil. What? Evil. I really think if you what? genuinely want any to of you right. baby killing if whores on campus people. are in trouble. If you want to help people? Or any of you people, baby killing whores on campus are going to hell. Any of you baby killing whores on campus, you need to repent. Hey, I'm not angry. You're the angry one. You're screaming at people that they're whores uh, and they don't deserve. Yeah, I want to be heard. Uh, I'm chill. I'm cool. No. You're the angry one. You're in a tizzy. No. Yeah. Put your big girl panties on and relax. You know, you're supposed to be a Princeton student. This is not the way to do it. I don't think you're going to graduate from here. You're probably going to fail. You know, because you're not thinking right. Your mind is so twisted. Oh, Your yeah, mind is so perverted. Really? You could probably get a job at CNN. You claim to your, your brain is so twisted. Really? Yeah, I'm sure they'd hire you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice there you go. We'll leave it at that. But so the Bible God, says... But this is not the way. Yeah. This is not the way if you believe in God. And if you want to you don't know God. Reach out your sin you separates either. you from That's God. Amazing. Don't tell me what God wants. You don't know Him. You don't know either. I do. God sent me here. I am here to be the mouthpiece of God. I am here to tell you the truth of the word of God. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I am an ambassador of God. And you need to repent, you wicked woman. You need to repent, you wicked woman. Yeah, look to your own sins. Stop being a disappointment to God. Stop being a disappointment to God. Oh, and if, the Bible if you think saying, I'm hateful, wait till you meet God. He's more hateful than I am. He no. hates sin more than I do. He is so angry at wickedness. He is so angry at sinners. You know how mad God is? God is as mad as hell. Hell is the public expression of God's hatred for sin. That's how mad God is. God is so angry at you, you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. I don't think so. Oh, I, I know. You're opinion. listening to the wrong voice. You're listening to the voice of the devil. You're listening to the voice of gangster rap music. Listening to the voice of Hillary Clinton. Listening to the voice of CNN. Get the word of God in your heart. Get the word of God in your mind. If you want an education, you need the fear of God. That's the beginning of wisdom. Read your own Torah. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I can tell. The, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. 
don't know anybody. I know all about you. I do. I know all about you. You're, you need Jesus. God is dealing with you right now. God is speaking to you right now. It's time for you to turn your life around. It is time for you to repent. The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. You know, the message, especially with their evangelism, is just God loves you. Jesus loves you. That's it. Yes, he loves you, but he'll send you to hell. Yes, he loves you, but there's still a judgment day. Yes, he loves you, but you still need to repent. And it's because he loves you, he tells you to repent. If, if, if your only message is God loves you, God loves you, that's not, that's not a gospel at all. <laughs> hey, let me tell you a story. There is a good Christian man. I read about him in the news. Probably Fox News. Because I don't listen. Probably Fox News. And he had, he had a large family, you know, six or seven kids. Because, well, he's a Christian. And so he believes in large families. But one of them, one of them, one of them was, uh, mentally uh, handicapped, you know, My topic. mentally handicapped. Oh, yes. Now, the, now, he was also very pro-life. In fact, he was encouraged, you know, to have an abortion because they knew his child would be born mentally handicapped, but he didn't do it. Because he loves all human life. He loves all human life, so he wouldn't have an abortion. Well, that child grew up, and uh, they were, I believe, like, they were cleaning their uh, septic tank or whatever, for whatever reason, their septic was open, and they saw, or he saw his son, his mentally handicapped son, fall into the septic tank in the backyard. So what did the father do? He's got six other children to look after. What does he do? After all, this is the mentally handicapped one. Should he let him die? Of course not. No, the father, true story, the father jumped into the septic tank. Even though it was over his head, he lifted up his child out of the filth for the others to get him out while he himself drowned and died giving his life for his mentally handicapped son. Now this is a true story, a true story of a pro-life father, a father who really loves his children. Many of you, many of you grew up without a father. You grew up maybe with a deadbeat father. Maybe you don't know the love of a father. I know the love of a father because God is my father. And he died for me. Jesus died for me. So, this is like uh, an analogy. Even though it's a true story, an analogy, you are like the handicapped child. Yes, you are like the handicapped child. Your brains aren't functioning right. And... Uh, and God should have just sent you to hell a long time ago. Like, uh, like they said, that father should have had an abortion. Uh, God, God would have been justified if he had sent you to hell a long time ago. But rather than send you to hell, God became a man in Jesus Christ. And he gave his life for you. He died on the cross for you. As unholy, ungrateful, unthankful, unrighteous, ungodly as you are, Jesus died for you. And that's the true love of a father. That's the true love that God intended for mankind. But sin is the enemy of love. Sin is the enemy of God. And when you're living a selfish life, oh, I just want to get drunk, get high, get laid whore around and have abortions. Oh, you're living like the devil. You're no better than the devil.
I used to get spotted QPs. I already told it earlier. It's true. I was puffing on blunts and sipping on gin and juice with my mind on my money. And my money on my mind. It's true. No, it's true. I am proof if... If Jesus can save me, he can save anyone. He can save... You guys care about sneakers too much. You care more about your sneakers than you care about God. What? Well, why do you guys put so much emphasis on your sneakers? Listen, I even look good when I'm barefoot. Yes, yes, it's true. It's true. Let me hear it. What are you, the fashion police? You remind me of the homosexuals. They are, they're the fashion police too. You remind me of the queers. Anyways, back to the important matters. It's heaven or hell when you die. You're all going to die. You're 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 all going to die. And the Bible says, prepare to meet your maker. Most of you are not ready to meet God. Most of you are not ready for judgment day. You're going to stand before God on judgment day to give an account to a holy God about your unholy life. To give an account to a righteous God about your unrighteous life. To give an account to a sin-hating God about your sin-loving life. Yes, sir. I don't know what you're even saying. Yeah. Judgment Day. Now, students, I need to warn you, you have a stalker. You have a stalker who is stalking you. He wants to kill you. You have a stalker. There's a killer stalking you. He's after you. Since the day you were born, he's been coming for you. The day he catches you will be the day that you die. You have a stalker named Death. I thought you were <laughs> keep, keep taking my hill. You have a stalker named Death. Death. Death is stalking you. He's out for blood. He's out to kill you. Maybe by drinking and driving. Maybe getting drunk and choking on your own vomit. Maybe you'll get raped and murdered. You are not a good person. Maybe you'll all go kaboom for Islam. Wow, that was really bad. Maybe you'll all go kaboom for Islam. 
You never know how. You never know when. But death, death, death is coming for you. That's right. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. But after this comes the judgment. But I know a man who's come back from the dead. Yes. I know a man. I know a man who's come back to life. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. And the only hope you have is the eternal life that is offered through the blood of Jesus Christ to those that repent of their sin. If you're familiar with farming, uh, you know you, you don't have a harvest on plowing day. You plow that field, you plant the seed, you water the seed, and in time there's a harvest. I go out and I preach and I'll have a crowd of 50 people, 100 people, sometimes even 500 people on a university that gather around and they listen for hours and they're arguing and they're debating and they're, some of them are upset. And, you know, here comes the atheist club on campus to join them in. Here comes the homosexual club on campus. And, you know, all these people come out. These are people who won't go to church. They won't even listen to Christian radio. It's, but they'll listen and argue with the preacher for hours at a time. But it's a, it's a battle. They're arguing. They're debating. Sometimes they get violent. But it's plowing the field, you know. People come up to me and they say, well, how many people got saved today? I say, well, I don't know yet, you know. Uh, love is patient. It takes time. And you don't have harvest day on plowing day. And uh, they say, well, you know, we don't think you're doing any good here. You know, everyone's upset. Everyone is, is angry. And I say, well, if you local Christians have been doing your job, maybe this field wouldn't be so stony. You know, I, I wish I could just come out here with the reaper and just reap the harvest. But you guys have been neglecting this field so badly. I got to come out here with the plow and break up these rocks. You know, it's such, such hard soil out here because of, you know, the local churches and local Christians have been neglecting it. You know, they want to say, oh, well, where's the harvest? You don't see all these people coming to the Lord. They're all upset. They're all angry. Well, you know, I'm just the traveling evangelist. I should be having the harvest. But the local Christians should have been plowing this field before I got here. Yes, I have. Yeah, because Jesus said, if you hate somebody in your heart... That's murder in your heart. And so God judges the heart. And if God looks at the heart of every student here, he is not happy. The heart of the most college students is full of lust, greed, selfishness. Like what? What statement? Well, I said gangster rap, and I turned away. Hey, I used to get drunk every night. I used to get high every day. I used to live a, th a sinful life. But when you turn to God, you turn away from sin. And that's what I'm here to say to this campus needs to do. Oh, you think it's a lack of serotonin, but I think I think your separation from God through your sin gives you a life you're not happy with, and that's why you have a, a lack of serotonin, so-called. Yeah, you can by what you think of it's called neuroplasticity. You can change your brain by what you think about. You can rewire your brain by your thoughts. It's the way it works. I know what he's up to. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Unspeakables. He's involved in unspeakables. Yeah, yeah, you too. You too old for this. No, it's unspeakable what you do. I'm not going to talk. No, no, no. You're craving attention. You, you, you crave attention. Why do you think so many people are taking offense to what you're saying? Because they're sin-loving God-haters. No, yeah, that's why. That's why. Because you love your sin. And I say, stop it. You love your sin. And I say, God hates it. You hate a holy God. You want a right. You, you don't want a righteous God. You, wanna, you want the devil to be your God. The devil says, get drunk, get high, get laid. And you say, yeah, let's do that. 
Uh, well, hate is ill will. Ill will. Ill will. So you feel like anyone who hates or has a hate love has a hate having mind is not with God or with Jesus. Yeah, if you have ill will, if you're not, if if you no, I'm benevolent, not malevolent. I am benevolent. Yeah, if you have a male, malevolent heart and ill will towards your neighbor, you wish they're hurt, you wish they're harm. That's hatred. That's murder of your heart. I wish nothing but good for your soul. That's why I want you to come out of sin, turn to God, have your sin forgiven through Christ. I want the best for your soul, eternal life, forgiveness. If you cannot accept someone for who they are, you do not have good will towards them. Do you accept a drug addict as a drug addict and say it's okay to be a drug addict? That's the way they are. No, if you love them, you say, hey, drug addict, stop being a drug addict. Yeah. What's that? Uh, here's a card if you'd like. You're welcome. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Open Air Outreach. Yeah. I'm trying to get exposed. See, the Bible says the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil destroys you through sin. But the Bible says Christ came that you might have life and life more abundantly. And he came to call sinners to repent of their sin. Well, uh, a man named Lucifer. No, God created the devil. No, no, God created Lucifer. Lucifer created the devil. No, Lucifer, is the devil. Lucifer made the choice to become a devil. He was an he was a good angel when God made him. Bees knees as you people from probably the 50s attire you're looking up. Like, so why did he create the devil? Take and for what? He didn't why create did the devil. God that made evil? Right. The devil is a fallen angel that chooses to be evil. Oh, that's a good question. God, does God know every future choice you're going to make? He does not. How does he not? Because He's it's all powerful and all knowing. Well, God knows all that there is to know. But, if, but he he knows the possibilities. He knows the options. But you have a genuine free will. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, when God saw how evil the world became, it grieved him in his heart and he repented of making the world. That's why he sent the flood. He wished he didn't create the world when he found how evil it became. So he did not create this world to sin. He did not create this world to be evil. He knew we had the potential. He gave us a free will. But he didn't know that we would. And it broke his heart when he saw that we did. You, you know you're guilty. There's STDs coming your way if you don't repent. I'm sure of it. With your type of attitude, with your wickedness, there's STDs coming your way if you don't repent. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. With that attitude of yours, you're bound to get some STDs. Yes, you say, oh, forget God, reject God, I'll do my own thing. That's why so many of you women have your chlamydia, your gonorrhea, your herpes, your syphilis. Because you say, forget God, F God, I'll do my own thing. I'll do it my way. So then they preach that men should repent. And the great need of America today is repentance. You know, to change your mind about sin. Sin leads to misery. Sin leads to death. Sin leads to hell. People need to change their mind about sin. To repent of sin. God is ready and willing to forgive. To accept everyone if they would just repent. God takes no delight in the death of the wicked. He's not wanting to punish anyone. He is, he is eager to pardon. He is eager to forgive. He's reluctant to judge. He's reluctant to punish. And he just needs some sign of repentance, some brokenness and humility, forsaking of sin. And he'll, he'll quickly and eagerly pardon and forgive. So we need to tell people to repent. Forgiveness has been made available through Christ. Christ shed his blood for every man, tasting death for every man. Christ gave his all for the salvation of souls. And we can do 
uh, we should do no less. We, we can do no better than Christ has done. The mission of Christ should be the mission of our life. He died, he made a way for salvation, shedding his blood for all men. And now they need to be told to repent and to receive the salvation that's available. Are you judging my judgment? Oh, so it's the judgment. So you are judging. I'm judging. I'm judging. Has arrived. Are you a Christian? And you walk around in public wearing yoga pants. You make Christians look bad. You make Christians look bad. You make Christians look bad. Boy, you have lesbians on campus who will lust and stumble over you. In Leviticus, it says that you should not use leather. You're you're causing these lesbians to stumble. Bible says not to cause your neighbor or your brother to stumble. You got Christian men on campus. You're tempting with your tight yoga pants. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian man. You know. I'm a Christian man. I'm you ought, to be, you ought to cover up the curvature of your body. That's what clothing is for. Good Christian men respect women and don't. Yeah, isn't there a part in Acts where John. But I'm saying you're being a temptress. Yes, you're being a temptress. You're walking around showing the curvature of your body. You're tempting every man around. You're even tempting the lesbians. You're so sexy, Daddy. You tempt me so. All, I, all I'm saying is you need to cover up. You ought to cover up. I'll cover you up, Daddy. That's right. Good thing I'm not on this sign. Good thing. Because the judgment you judge, so shall you be judged. Smart guys. You know. But if you say judging is wrong, that's a judgment. I don't think the clothes apply his character. You have literally admitted that you were judging that. Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 5 says, Thou hypocrite, first remove the log out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly to remove the speck in your neighbor's eye. So he's not saying nobody can judge. He's saying hypocrites can't judge. He's saying get the log out of your own eye first. You have sin in your life. You've no right to judge. You're judging again. You said I'm a hypocrite. You said I have sin in my life. You're saying judging is wrong, so you're full of judgment. You're full of judgment. You just don't want to accept the fact that you're wrong. What was the last time you sinned? What did you do? I don't even remember. It's been a while. Oh, it's been a while. I'm not fully saying that Jesus hates sin. If any of you guys are interested, I'm a fucking money. I'm a good Christian man. Wait, I'm with somebody who's going to go to the vacation. I'm going to go to Hunter Cancer Research Institute in Stanford, Utah. We're having an event out there. So every dollar counts. You guys need some good. I'm a fucking money. I'm a good man. And I can tell you the last I tell you what. You're probably the type of Christian girl. You're, you're probably the type of Christian girl that wears a bikini at the beach. Oh, I bet you're the kind of girl that wears a one piece at the beach. Wow. Wait, what? So what? Is it? Clothing. So she's supposed to Clothing. What a full on outfit on. Just do it. Just do it. What? What do you mean? It's not hard. Just, just wear clothing at the beach. It's not hard. It's supposed to cover yourself. The, your, a woman's body is for the eyes of her husband, not the eyes of the public. How to live the blessed Christian life. Uh, I guess you could call it your best life now. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Bible actually speaks abundantly about uh, the blessing of God and how to be blessed of God. Uh, to bless... To be blessed means to be made happy. Uh, when the Bible talks about blessing one another, uh, it means to make one another uh, happy. That, or when God's going to bless a people, it means he's going to make them happy. Uh, that's what to, to bless means, to make happy, if you study the uh, Hebrew and the Greek. And if you just do a simple word search throughout the Bible, it's pretty abundant. 
on uh, teachings on the blessed Christian life. Blessed is the man who, or blessed are, uh, all throughout Psalms, Proverbs, and the New Testament. And so, you know, the question, does God want you to be happy? Does God care about whether you're happy or not? The answer is yes, He does care. Uh, I did a, a sermon a few years ago, uh, maybe 12 years ago to be exact, 12, 13 years ago, called uh, Holiness or Happiness. And I talked about how, you know, you ought to be living uh, in your pursuit for a holy night life, not necessarily a happy life. And it's true that our pursuit should not be for our own happiness. But I think that it's a false uh, antithesis to say it's happiness or holiness. Uh, biblically speaking, it's happiness through holiness. God is giving you an opportunity to get right. God is all calling all of you to forsake your sin. Turn from your sin. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord our God, and he will abundantly pardon. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. God wants to forgive your soul. You just need to turn away from your sin and trust in the blood of His Son. You just need to turn away from your sin and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. God will pardon you of every sin that you've ever committed. God will forgive you of every sin that you've ever done if you would just forsake your sin and trust in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and rose from the dead. And he's standing at the right hand of the Father, but he's coming back to judge this world. And when Jesus Christ comes back, it will not be to save the world. When Jesus Christ comes back, it will be to destroy the world. He came back the first time. He came the first time as the Lamb of God. He's coming back the second time as the Lion of Judah to slay the enemies of God to take vengeance on those who know not God and obey not the gospel. The Bible says he will take the wicked and put them into the wine press of God's wrath and stomp you out like grapes until your blood flows like wine. He's going to stomp out the wicked when he returns. You better fear God today, because you will fear God on that day. You better fear God now while you're able. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Bible says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from iniquity. Stop being a disappointment to God. Stop being a disappointment to God. You are a grief in the heart of God. You are a pain in the rear of God. You are a headache in the head of God. You need to stop being a sinner. Stop being a sinner. Stop being a disappointment to God. I... I know the pleasure of sin. I've tasted of sin. I've lived in sin. I've practiced sin. I know all about sin. And it's nothing compared to the pleasure of knowing God. It's nothing compared to the pleasure of having your sin forgiven. Having your, your soul right with God is better than any sin you could ever commit. God hates your gangster rap music. No, no, no. I'm not your daddy. I'm not your daddy. I'm not your daddy. I'm not here to give you hugs and kisses. I'm not your daddy. Yes, God hates your gangster rap music. God hates your gangster rap music. Wicked, wicked, and wrong. That's a bunch of hate speech. Gangster rap music is a bunch of hate speech. Back. So they went out, and then they preached. The gospel ought to be proclaimed. You know, living your life and having your life be a witness is great, but there has to be words preached. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
You know, nobody ever told me I was going to hell. How was I supposed to know? I was in my own deception. I was under the influence of the devil. Other people knew me, you know, when they, they said, when I became a Christian, they said, oh, we, we were praying for you. We were praying for you for years. Why didn't you ever tell me? You were praying for me for years, and I, I didn't even know I was going to hell. But you knew it, and you didn't tell me. I could have gotten saved sooner. Think about how many people, maybe people you've been praying for. People are like, oh, that, that person needs my prayer, and you pray. That's great. Pray for them, but preach to them. Tell them the truth. Tell them the gospel. Tell them about sin and salvation. Our country is more lost than ever before. And that means we need to pray like never before. We need to fast like never before. We need to preach like never before. We need to yearn and grieve and break like never before. We can't keep doing what we've been doing because it didn't work. It's not working. You know, desperate times cause for desperate measures, they say. Well, since America is more lost than ever before, we ought to seek God like never before for His Spirit to use us. I tell you what, you're either grieving the Spirit or you're being grieved by the Spirit. You see, when you get close to the Holy Ghost, you get close to the Holy Spirit, He shares His grief with you. He shares His heart with you. You become more broken than you've ever been before. The most intimate experiences I've ever had with the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I weep and I cry as all these thoughts flood my head of the nations and the cities and the people around me who are in darkness, serving the devil, dying and going to hell. Every day they're going to hell. Every day they're perishing. And I see the, the, the work of the devil in the lives of my friends. The, my, my, my friends from before I got saved and how they're dying from drugs, they're dying from heroin. They're, they're you know, young girls who had abortions in their teens and now they want to start families in their 20s and 30s and they can't, they're infertile. You know, because Planned Parenthood didn't tell them abortion might make you infertile. Now they want to have families. So I see the destruction of the devil in their lives. And it breaks my heart because it breaks God's heart. And when you get close to the Holy Spirit, He shares His heart with you. He shares His grief with you. When the Holy Spirit came to the prophets in the Old Testament, it says, and the burden of the Lord came on to them. The burden of the Lord. I like that Leonard Ravenhill, he said, uh, well, people say, oh, roll your burdens on the Lord. Well, who does he roll his burdens on? Who does he share his griefs with? I remember there was a time in my ministry where I felt the grief of God and the broken heart of God and I prayed, God, I just can't bear this anymore. It's too much. How can you live this way every day in such grief? And I say, God, please take it away. I, I, I'll still serve you. I'll still preach. You know, I'm, I, won't, I won't slow down, but I just can't be grieving like this every day. And I tell you, that, that's, that's what I regret that prayer more than any other prayer I've ever prayed. I prayed the wrong prayer. I shouldn't have asked him to take his grief away. I shouldn't have asked him to take his burden away. I should have asked him to give me the strength to bear it. That's all. So I've changed. God, give me your grief. Give me your burden. I want to ache like you ache. I want to be broken like you're broken. Give me your heart, Lord. Just give me the strength to bear it. That's what we need. Uh, throw some money in there for the poor man. You want to know what I'm after? You want to know what I'm here for? I'm here for your soul. Yes. I'm here for your soul. Your soul has been corrupted with sin. Your soul has been polluted. Your soul has been perverted. Your soul is damned before God. Your soul abides under the wrath of your maker. And I want to see your soul saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to see your soul forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. The problem is, many of you love your sin more than you love your soul. You'd rather get drunk, get high, get laid, and go to hell at the end. You'd rather get drunk, get high, get laid. 
and then you'll go to hell in the end rather than repent. Turn from your sin. Ask God to forgive you. Be forgiven through Jesus. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Yes, I can. You need to believe Jesus is alive. I'm here to testify. I met him. I know him. He is risen from the dead. The Bible is a collection of eyewitness accounts of what God has done in history. The Bible was written by prophets, by apostles, by men who walked with Jesus, who talked with Jesus. Well, I just want to hear you say, how do you get into heaven? You need to repent of your sin and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. This ain't the gospel. Yeah, yes. We're not preaching the gospel. We're the preaching. death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The gospel is that he's alive. Like I said, I'm here to testify. I know Jesus. He's alive. It's called the Bible. No, no. The suspenders. What I can only describe as God's worst pair of shoes ever made. Oh my God! This is like horrible moccasins. Yeah. Look at that. Just because you college students dress like slobs doesn't mean everyone else has to. Your hat's on backwards. That defeats the purpose. What's the purpose of a hat? To block the sun from your eyes. So the Bible says, the Bible says Jesus Christ rose from the dead. You're all going to die. You're all going to die. You're heading towards the grave. You're going to die. You're going to die. That's right. Some of you will die sooner than others. Some of you will die sooner than others. Your only hope is that Jesus rose from the dead. Your only hope is that Jesus rose from the grave. I believe in God because it's so obvious. Yes. Yes. Just study human physiology or even animal physiology. It's called intelligent design. Even with your combined intelligence, you could not make a robot that could even compare to the human body. The human body is more advanced than any robot that our combined intelligence could create. Yes. You, you are living proof of the intelligent mind of God. Yes. Your body is the robotics of God. Yes. We are a creation created, designed by God. It's so obvious that we're created by God. I don't have to argue it or debate it. Everybody knows it. You're just in denial of it. You're irrational. E evolution? You mean... You mean that we You mean that we evolved from animals? I'll, I'll tell you this, Charles Darwin had the mind of a monkey. That totally contradicts everything you're saying. First you want to disavow the evolution of animals and then you're like the mind of a monkey. No, no, Charles Darwin had the mind of a monkey. No, no, no. Evolution is a counterfeit worldview, an assault on the truth of God. That's what it is. The devil wants to brainwash you, to dehumanize you, to take your value away. You were created in the image of God. What separates you from the animals? Your intelligence, your conscience. You're not an animal. You didn't evolve from animals. It's the strategy of the devil to dehumanize humanity, to make you live like animals, thinking you're just an animal. 
No wonder you live like party animals. Yes, no wonder you live like party animals. Your thinking has been corrupted. Your thinking has been perverted. So my exhortation to you today is to shine the light in the darkness and to plow the field and to plant the seed and to water the seed in the hope and expectation of a harvest. Because you never know whose life is going to be changed by the power of the gospel. You, if you had known me when I was living in sin and living in darkness, I was the last person you would think would be interested in God. I was the last person you would think would be interested in Christ. Sometimes the most lost people make the most radical converts. Because he who's been forgiven most loves most. So we have a gospel that can change lives, that can save souls, that can transform and revive communities. And we ought to be excited and on fire for what God is doing. Because God is alive and God is on the move. And there's a real warfare to fight with the devil. And we ought to have that military mindset that we're in a battle for souls. And we're not, there's one thing a soldier does. He fights until the mission is accomplished. And he'll give his life for the mission. And if they'll do that for their earthly kingdoms, well, how much more should we do that for the heavenly kingdom? Fight until the mission, the great commission, is accomplished. Amen? Good question. If you want to be saved, if you don't want to go to hell, if you want to go to heaven, you need to repent of your sin. Turn away from your sin and put your trust in Jesus Christ who bled and died on the cross for your sin. He suffered an agonizing, brutal death of crucifixion to provide an alternative to your damnation to provide a substitute for your hell. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, every sin you've ever committed can be forgiven if you repent, turn away, forsake it. The homosexual who leaves his homosex and turns to Jesus can be saved. Yes, the liar or thief who repents and turns to Jesus can be saved. Whoever turns to the Lord, the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, so what if a gay person That's what I just said. If you will call out to God in brokenness and humility and repentance, God will forgive you. If you cry out, if you're, if you cry and say, God, God, save my soul. God. Change my life. Oh, God will answer with power. I, I knelt my knee to Jesus Christ 17 years ago. I was addicted to every drug known to man almost. Yes, I committed more felonies than I could remember. Yes, I had been more, I had been so violent, so hateful. I can't. And from the rough streets of Connecticut. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm. I'm. I'm from the. I'm from the ghetto of New Britain. What? The ghetto of New Britain. I'm from the hood. Well, I was. I was raised poor, raised on welfare. My father's a homeless drunk. My brother's a Latin king in prison. My sister's a prostitute. You know, I come from the hood. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has changed my life. I was selling drugs when I was 14. I was going in and out of jail at 15. I got my, I got my neck slit in a knife fight at 15. But when I met Jesus Christ, he changed it all, reversed it all, transformed me from the inside out. I became a new man. 
a new man. I left the life of sin. I left the life of drugs. I left the life of crime. And I committed my life to Christ. I tell you what, sin brings misery. Sin brings death. Sin brings damnation. Oh, but there's blessedness. Blessedness and holiness that's found in Christ. What's that? Let's look at the, the, the trends of our culture. Christianity is not just, uh, you know, disbelieved. Christianity is hated and despised. It's not that they don't know about God. It's that they know about him and they hate him. Going back, as you study the, the, the history of our nation, going back to the 60s, when you see these countercultural revolutions, this, you know, this move of immorality, what is it? It's nothing more than an anti-Christ movement. Going all the way back, the sexual revolution is a revolt against the design of God, the will of God for sexual activity. Feminism is an assault on the family unit, just as much as sexual immorality is. Feminism is an assault on the family that God has instituted. And the, the order of things, and of course abortion. God says be fruitful and multiply. And a demonic nation revolts against that, murders their babies. Everything that you see, these cultural shifts, these cultural changes, it's a revolt against Christian culture. I made a video just uh, the other day out here in Amish country, and I was talking about where I was, and I said, here, we're, we're, you know, I'm in an Amish culture. It's a nice culture. Pre people still reproduce here. They, they still have families here. No, it's, it's funny, but it's sad. Yep. It's true. My generation, the millennials, are not reproducing. They don't want to. They want to, if, if they have children at all, they want one child. Well, two parents having one child is not multiplying. That's a shrinking society. Two parents having one child will kill a nation. If, that, if that's the trend that continues on, our nation is done. Two parents having one child, it's not sustainable. It's not viable. We're, we're finished in just a matter of time. And so you have abortion and you have homosexuality spreading throughout our country. Homosexuality. All of this is an attack on the family unit. And no society is stronger than the family unit. The backbone of every culture, the backbone of every society is the family unit. So if the devil wants to destroy a nation, all he has to do is destroy the family. And that's what you see with abortion, homosexuality, feminism. These cultural shifts, these cultural changes are an assault from the devil on our nation, which if these continue and are sustained, our nation will not be. Our nation cannot survive. So we not only have a nation on the brink of reprobation because we've heard the gospel and have rejected it. They know about God and they don't want to serve him. They've heard about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And if that doesn't bring you to repentance, nothing will. But then a, a culture and a society that just by itself is, is self-destructing and shrinking and dying. A culture that doesn't reproduce and multiply and grow is a culture that's dying. And so that's the, that's what, the situation that we find ourselves in. That's the situation that we're currently in. We're on the brink of real destruction. If you're an atheist, you need to stop denying the obvious. If you're an atheist, you need to stop denying the existence of God. Because you all know in your heart of hearts, you all know in your heart of hearts that God is real. You all know in your heart of hearts that God exists. The Bible says, knowledge of God is an inescapable revelation. Because you have the law of God written on your heart. You know you should love God supremely. You know you should have no other gods before Him. You have the law of God written on your heart. The conscience. So on Judgment Day, you'll be without excuse for being a sinner. You will have no excuse on Judgment Day for being wicked. 
You know, your own conscience says, hey, Johnny, don't be a masturbator. Your own conscience says, Susie, don't be a slut. Your own conscience tells you these things. So on Judgment Day, you'll have no defense, no excuse, no justification. That's why you need to be forgiven through Jesus. Okay, we have, we have really just one message today, and that's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you about the hatred of Jesus. I, I am here to spread the holy hatred of Jesus. Because, oh no, that's not true. You're a false teacher, you lied. It says in Hebrews 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated iniquity. He hated iniquity. Psalms 5, 5 says Jesus, God hates all workers of iniquity. Psalms 5, 5, you just make things up as you go. Why don't you read the Bible? I am Saint Jesse. I am Saint Jesse. Yes. And you know who made me a saint? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, the devil made me a sinner. The devil got me puffing on blunts and sipping on gin and juice. The mind on my money and my money on my mind. I was living the thug life when I was 15 years old, going in and out of jail, convicted of a felony, facing five to 10 years. And then I cried out, God, save my soul. God, change my life. And I went down a sinner and I came up a saint. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You know, Jesus can make you homo no mo. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus can make you homo no mo. Now he wants your money. We don't we don't want your money. It seems pretty gay to me. It seems pretty gay to me. You know, it's encouraging death by AIDS. Not when they give their HIV injections up the anus. Well, how do you think that gets in their body? Yeah, penis injections through the rectum, injecting HIV. Squirt, squirt, squirt. You know, oh. Man, you don't want the HIV sperm in your rectum. Is that the kind of porn you watch? It's so... See, but that's the... The devil has a plan for your life. The devil has a plan for your life. It's on you. Don't worry, but please. I feel like you need this. Why would you have something like that? You're a piece of shit. Why would you have something... Well, at least you're getting rid of it. At least you're getting rid of it. See, the devil has a, a horrible plan for your life. The devil wants to say, it's okay to be gay. Go sodomize your fraternity, brother. He wants to encourage you to, you know, whore around, sleep around, die from HIV. You know what these homosexuals really love? You know what these homosexuals really love? They love their gay orgies. Yes, they claim to want a loving, committed relationship. What they really want is just a big, gay orgy. It's not reasonable. It's not reasonable. Yes, sir. So, if God hates gays and he doesn't want them on this planet and all of that stuff, and he's, he's the creator of everything, right? That's correct. So why would he create anyone who is gay or has the like ability to become gay? Why would he ever do that if he hates them so much? Yeah, well, good question. First of all, God didn't make you gay. Nobody is born gay. You're, would, you're born a baby. And then you grow up and make choices and you make yourself gay. 
Now, God didn't know what you were going to grow up to be. No, he did not. The Bible says when God saw how wicked the world was, he repented of making it and he sent the flood. He didn't create anyone to sin. He didn't create anyone to be wicked. You're a disappointment to God, you sinners. Yeah, if you are a homosexual, if you are a homosexual, you grew up to be a disappointment to God. Stop being a disappointment to your maker. And you don't know how much time God's going to give you to repent. Some of you guys might not survive your college years. Some of you might not survive your temptations. I got friends who have died from their sin. Friends who are dead today because of their sin. Sin is a serial killer. You better watch out. But let me warn you. Let me warn you. Pornography leads to homosexuality. Yes. Hey, all the frogs are turning gay? I think that's what happened to the dodo bird. Yeah, what, how did the dinosaurs go extinct? Maybe they all turned gay. Yeah, I think there's also something in the air yeah. that's making me a little sick. But the good, coming out of their mouth. We're here to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. No matter how sinful you are, Jesus died for you. No matter how wicked you are, Jesus shed his blood for you. If you will simply repent of your sin, God will forgive you. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. That's what the Bible says. You need to forsake your sin. See, say again. Yeah, I do. I go to it, the church if you're going to hell unless you repent. And I'm here to tell you all about my church. You're going to hell unless you repent. You, you preach repent of your sin. They say that's works. That's works. No, repentance is not a work. Repentance is a change of mind that results in works. The Bible says repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So the Bible makes a distinction between the works and the repentance. The works follow the repentance. The repentance is not the work. Thou shalt not judge, lest thy be judged. So instead of informing people not sin, why not encourage them to find Jesus Christ as their Savior? Because yeah, well, that's the first step. Well, I do, I do both. Uh, well, so far I've heard I, I do I've both. Heard, I've heard has been worried. Yeah, well, that, that's why you need to be saved. If, if you're a whore, uh, whoring around, you're in trouble with God, you need to be saved. If you're a homo, homoing around, you're in trouble with God, and you need to be saved. Actually, I think everybody needs to be saved, regardless. We're all equal. Well, so you just judged everybody. Well, I mean, yeah. We're you all sinners. We're all, we're all... Again, you just judged everyone again. I mean... I thought you... Yeah, well, I thought you said we're not supposed to judge, and now you're just passing out judgment to the whole world. You're just... Oh, I'm not judging individually. I'm judging the Bible says. Yeah, well, I didn't judge individually either. Uh, that's true. The Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, the reason you deserve hell, the reason you're in trouble with God is because you chose to go your own way. Every time that you chose to sin, you chose to be like the devil and trying to be your own God. But that's exactly why you need the cross of Jesus. Uh, the cross is a medium of forgiveness, a way that God can offer you pardon without dishonoring the law that you violated. Yes. Yeah, well, the Bible tells us uh, who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. The Bible says, be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible gives lists. The Bible says drunkards and fornicators and homosexuals. So we're not just making it up. We're, well, that, we're, not, we're not the one judging. We're, we're, the Bible's the one that judged. 
it's the word of God. So, so we're not we're not trying to play God. Instead of away from sin, because it, it, you don't begin by transforming people by saying avoid this, this, and this. You transform people by saying, hey, look for Jesus. That's what you do. What you're doing is you're focusing on the commandments that were like, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. But when approached and asked, Jesus said that the two most important commandments were love thy God and love thy neighbor. They were not the thou shalt not. They were the thou shalt. Mm -hmm. Aren't you the one that said you're a sinner? I am a sinner. Yeah, well, I don't take advice from sinners. I don't think, I don't, th I'm sorry. I don't think you really know what you're talking about. You're not, you're not thinking right. No, that's right. I used to, I used to be a sinner. I used to be a sinner. But you know what, you know what, you know what changed my life? You know what changed my life was when I heard a hellfire preacher when I was locked up, when I was in my cell. I heard a hell fire preacher and I realized that I was on my way to hell, hell, hell. And I needed to be born again. That's what Jesus said. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. So I, so I cried out to God. Well, you should be scared of hell. Jesus said, don't fear man who can destroy the body and then can do no more. Fear God who can destroy body and soul in hell. Jesus said, fear God because of hell. Well, how many of you believe God loves you? How many of you believe? All right, so I don't need to convince you of that. How many of you believe you deserve to go to hell? Only a few. See, so I know where I need to... My emphasis is on hell. My emphasis is what you don't believe, not what you already believe. Yes, sir. Well, if you love righteousness, you'll hate the counterpart. If you love God, you'll hate the opposite. Now, the Bible says, you that love the Lord, hate that which is evil. It's a command. You that love God should hate what is evil because God is the opposite of evil. God is the opposite of sin. To love one is to hate the other. You cannot have love of any kind without hatred of some kind. No, no, he's full of hate for sin. Yes, Jesus. In Hebrews... Chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated iniquity. I'm, so I'm here to spread the hate of Jesus. That doesn't exist. Yes. You should see what sin is. It's a killer. Sin is a serial killer. I remember when the early days of my ministry and I was out on the streets preaching. But, uh, you know, I, I just did these different tricks and gimmicks that I learned from different ministries. Even just magic tricks and money trivia and all this stuff to try and get a crowd. And, and uh, you know, but th there came a day when I, when I said, God, you know what? I'm done with the tricks and I'm done with the gimmicks. I don't see that in the book of Acts. I don't see them doing magic tricks and money trivia out in the marketplace. What I see them doing is preaching the word with fire and boldness and unction and anointing. And I said, God, that's what I want to do. So I went out onto the streets after much prayer and much fasting with the, with the Holy Spirit of God like I felt like never before in my life. And I began to preach with fire in the same streets I had been preaching in for months. And the same people that would just walk by, wouldn't even notice, just walk by, wouldn't even take an interest, were now stopping in their tracks as I stood there and rebuked their sin and warned them about God's judgment against these cities. And they would get stopped in their tracks. But you know who else would stop with the police? I went months without problems with the police. And now every time I went out, I was having problems with the police. Everywhere I went, every time I had an outreach, the police were being called. I, the demonic hecklers were, were attacking me, trying to assault me. The police would come and arrest me. I thought, well, maybe it's just Connecticut. And I go to Texas, and then my first outreach in Texas, sure enough, here comes the police trying to shut me down. I had gone at least at least 12 months or more 
of street ministry without having any problems with the police. So long as I was doing the money trivia, as long as I was doing the magic tricks, as long as nobody was really being convicted, as long as nobody was really paying attention, the police left me alone. And as soon as I go out there and I put all that away and I just preach the Word of God with blunt honesty, suddenly I'm getting arrested, I'm being threatened with arrest, the police are showing up at every outreach. You know, you think if we would just get the Holy Spirit, we would get revival. Maybe. But if we get the Holy Spirit, we might just get a riot. Okay, Stephen went out and preached full of the Holy Ghost. They couldn't resist the wisdom of the words that he spoke with. They couldn't refute his arguments. He was the greatest apologist in all of history. They couldn't refute any of it. The wisdom that he spoke, he was, he was the, the greatest apologist. And what did they do? Were they all converted? Was there a revival? No, he became the first Christian martyr. They picked up stones to kill him. Well, why? Didn't, didn't he convince them? They couldn't resist the wisdom with which he spoke. Didn't he convince them? Yes, he convinced them. And that's why they killed him. Because the problem with the sinner is not intellectual. The problem with the sinner is moral. There has to be a, a change of his heart, not just a change of his opinion. But Peter, on the day of Pentecost, also full of the Holy Ghost, he preached and they were convicted in their heart. And what did they do? Pick up stones to stone him? No, they were all converted, 3,000 in that one day. So you don't know which one it's going to be. You get full of the Holy Ghost, you go out and you preach the word. People will get convicted. But how they respond in that conviction might be picking up stones to stone you or might be being converted by the thousands. But that's, that's the only hope for America being full of the Holy Spirit, preaching His Word with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to see riots or we're going to see revival. It's one of the two. We're going we're to be stoned or, or we're going to you know, convert the masses. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. I see a lot of people out here today trying to get drunk on alcohol. The Bible... Uh, oh, I'm from Texas. No, no, we're better than Westboro. Our signs are better. See, What's our signs say, well, ours says trust Jesus. What does Westboro say? God hates fags. That's okay. what they say. What? So I think our signs are better. Uh, well, the Bible says God hates all sinners, but we don't put that on the signs. Well, the Bible says... Since we're still all still human, are we yeah. all sinners? Yeah, well, that's why we're here to tell you to stop being a sinner. The Bible says to become born again. Yeah, but I don't think you can... Right. Even when you're born again, you can't be well, you don't, sinless. you don't have it's faith. Human. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, no. Well, kind of human, but it's kind of. You're supernatural when you're born again. You get full of the Holy Spirit. You get full of God. Listen, I used to smoke marijuana every day. I used to get drunk every night. I used to sin my little heart out. No, no, no. But when I met Jesus 18 years ago, I left my life of sin behind. When you're truly born again, you follow Jesus, not sin. If you're following sin, you're not following Jesus. Yeah, but even when you follow Jesus, you still sin. Well, you not you don't follow Jesus into sin. The only way you will sin is if you turn your back on God. If you turn your back on Jesus. Absolutely not. I obey Jesus every day. Well, not not really. I mean, it's been 18 years of serving Jesus. I have no temptation to get drunk anymore. No temptation to uh, do drugs anymore. Uh, no temptation to lie. I just want to... I. You have no idea. I so badly want to live the rest of my life without sinning. I'm going to go all of eternity without sinning. Well, I want to preach to everybody. I want, I'm not here over just for you. I want everyone to know what we're here for. No, no, what, you've had two minutes already. Yeah, I'm All I'm saying is you you can put down the beer. I don't have you don't have okay, well if you're a drunkard, you don't have to get drunk. You have a free will. You can choose not to be a drunkard. If 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 you're a masturbator, you can choose to put down the porno. What? Yeah, you can put down the porno. Are you ready to die? I'm gay. What well, if you're a homosexual? There's probably some STDs coming your way because of your sexual promiscuity. You need to repent, stop being a homosexual, become a homo no mo. I, yeah, 
I know a man who can set you straight. Really? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know a man you can trust. Yeah, he can get, Jesus can help you get over your male phobia, your irrational fear of men. He can make a good woman out of you, even the likes of you. Jesus Christ can save and change and transform. What do you mean making a yeah. statement like that about? She said you don't she's know a her. lesbian. You don't know a her. Lesbian, you she don't said. know her. You she don't have a right she's to make gay. that. And thing off she's wearing like yoga that. pants in public. <laughs> she's wearing yoga pants in public. And you know what that leads to? Look, yoga pants in public leads to STDs. Yes, that's what it leads to. Yeah, some low life will try and pick you up and pump you full of STDs. That's what happens every day in America, every single day. So the Bible says, unless a man is born again, How many he will good not are see the here? kingdom of God. I think, I think you've been smoking here, huh? too much marijuana. You think so? You're now confused. You so? Yes, you're yeah. irrational. You've yeah. been smoking too much of the wacky tobacco. Yeah. You probably yeah. think it's okay to be gay because... Because you're not thinking right. You're just not thinking right. Did God not create the homosexual? Time for you to get a sober mind. Did God mind. not create the no, lesbian? No, no, God did not create homosexuality. God created heterosexuality. God created you and everybody it here, was the devil, the, the devil who created homosexuality. Devil. Yes. Devil the devil's the one who put I it in your the mind. Devil. The devil's the one who gave you the suggestion. You need to stop listening to the voice of the devil. You need to stop listening to the voice of Satan. The Bible says, he that sins is of the devil. And whosoever has been born of God does not commit sin. It's the devil who tempts you and says, hey, Johnny, be a queer. Hey, Jimmy, smoke some marijuana. Hey, oh, Susie, be a, be a whore. Like you. It's the devil Jeez. who's tempting you, giving you sinful suggestions. You need to listen to the voice of God. You need to listen to the word of God. And God says, unless you repent, you will perish. The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. The only reason you're not in hell today is because God's a merciful there God. No hell, oh, God will make a believer there out of you. No you're in for a rude awakening. Oh, you're in for a rude what? awakening. I'll be dead and won't know it. You're going to be screaming in hell louder than that. Ah. Yeah, that's right. You're going to be screaming in hell louder than that. Yes. Wait. You're the reason. You're the reason hell is justified. You're the reason hell is justified. God will send you to hell because you deserve it. I'm a United States Air Force veteran. It doesn't get you to heaven. It doesn't get you to heaven. I have a right to You are a sin loving God hater. You are a sin loving God hater. And it's only by the mercy of God you're not in hell today. It's only by the mercy of God you didn't go to hell the first day that you sinned. Oh yes, God is a forgiving God, a merciful God, but you must meet the conditions. You must turn away from your sin. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord our God. I mean, think about how unreasonable you guys are. You embrace everything that's bad for you. Drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, yeah! Jesus, repentance, holiness, oh, no way. No way. It's like, you embrace everything that's bad for you. Porno and masturbation. Horrible, horrible. You're hurting yourselves. You're hurting yourselves. Society is doomed. Society is doomed if you don't repent. If society doesn't repent, society is doomed. You guys aren't even reproducing anymore. Have abortions, become homos. You know, they call them. Uh, now they're, they, they have a group of people now, millennials, called dinks. Dinks. That's double income, no kids. People ha people want that. They, it, people are getting married and saying, let's not have children. What do you think marriage is all about? 
Starting a family. Starting a family. Keep trying. God will work miracles. Yes, Sarah couldn't, but Abraham kept trying. And God worked a miracle. That's true. He should have just kept trying with Sarah. God will work a miracle. Look, society's either multiplying or dying. Multiply or die. And we're in the dying phase as a culture. We're in the dying phase as society. It's a good thing we got people out there like the Duggars, you know. What? Well, I'm not talking about that guy. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking about the parents who are having children. And so the principle that you can draw from the scriptures is very uh, simple. That sin leads to misery. And holiness leads to happiness. I look back on my life and my family tree and I see all of the misery that I uh, experienced growing up and all the misery that my mother experienced, all the misery that my family has experienced, and I can trace it all back to sin. You know, we were created to have a, a loving relationship with God. We were created to have a loving relationship one with another. And in that loving relationship is happiness. Uh, sin is nothing more than a violation of the loving relationships we were intended to have. When you blaspheme God's name, you're not loving him like you should. When you're stealing from your neighbor, you're not loving them like you should. So sin is nothing more than an interruption or an interference with the loving relationships God created us to have. So I can look back at my family tree and, you know, I wish I had come from, you know, a happy home and a happy family, but I see how adultery got in there and adultery brought misery. I see how uh, drunkenness got in there and drunkenness brought misery and drugs got in there and the drugs brought misery. And so it's very simple. Sin causes misery. Now, it's the opposite of what the world thinks. You see, sin is a liar. And from the very beginning, when God was uh, dealing with Adam and Eve in the garden and the devil came and tempted them, the devil lied to them and said, oh, God is holding something back from you that's good for you. God, uh, you know, he's not really uh, keeping your best interest in mind. Uh, you should disobey God. It'll be good for you. And so man, since the very beginning, has been disobeying God, thinking it's going to benefit him, thinking it's going to bless his life, thinking God is holding out something that's going to be good for him. So sin is a lie. Sin has been a lie from the very beginning. A sinner's perspective is deceptive. When you think somehow there's going to be a benefit in sin, that it's going to improve your life, make your life better, that's a deception. So the sinner's perspective is deceptive. Uh, God was telling Adam and Eve the truth. In the day that you eat, you will surely die. See, God was looking out for his best interest. God was looking out for his benefit. God didn't want Adam and Eve to die. So he would stay away from the sin. Stay away from sin. By, by one man, sin came into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men, the Bible says, for all have sinned. So sin has consequences, negative consequences. Death, decay, disease, misery. And God was looking out for their best interest. So Christ came to undo uh, what Adam had done. Adam brought sin and death. Christ wants to bring righteousness and life. So he sent Christ to bless you in turning you away from your iniquities. You know, just getting the sin out of your life makes your life so much better. You know, I, I think about some of my friends who have died from drugs and heroin. And I'm just like, and, and all these other people I know who suffer from drug addiction and alcohol and, and the poverty that it brings to their life. Like, you know, alcohol and drugs are married to poverty where, where, where drugs and alcohol spread, poverty spreads. You know, and if someone would, would simply not have drug problems, their life would be so much better. Like if you have drug problems, your life drops like, you know, 95% of, of your, uh, you know, 
happiness and joy in life. You know, 95% of your potential joy in life is taken away simply if you, if you have drug and alcohol problems. You know, and it's a, it's a snowball effect. One problem leads to another problem. You know, drugs and alcohol problems lead to marriage problems, lead, lead to criminal problems. You know, sin is, is such a, a destroyer. That's all that it is. So, it, so if you wa want to have a blessed life, you need to live a holy life. And that's what Christ came to turn us away from our sins with our best interest in mind. And the, the backbone of society is the family unit. Society is only as strong as the family unit is. And that's why I'm always so encouraged when I see large Christian families. That's one of the, the, the best things about the Mennonite community is you see these large Christian families. That's the strength of any society and the strength of any culture. As a whole, our American culture is dying. Liberal philosophy and liberal theology uh, is destroying itself because people, uh, a lot of people my age, the young millennials, they don't want to have children. Or if they have children, they only have one child. Well, two parents having one child is not multiplying. That's, uh, that's decreasing the number of the next generation. Or they, they have abortions and now uh, the spread of homosexuality. Our society is crumbling and so society is only as strong as the family unit. God sees every deed that you commit. God sees every thought that you think. God sees every motive of your heart. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, Satan is a faggot. Satan's going to go to hell. Satan's going to burn in hell. You don't want to follow the devil. You don't want to follow the devil. That's a bad idea. You need to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, follow me. He said, unless a man denies himself, picks up his cross, and follows me, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus said, unless you forsake all that you have, you cannot be his disciple. No, if you're out here as a drunkard, you're not a Christian, you're going to hell. If you're a fornicator today, you're not a Christian, you're going to hell. If you're a homosexual today, you're not a Christian, you're going to hell. The Bible says, you must be born again. You need to be made a new creature in Christ. You need to be made normal and straight. The Bible says, straight is the way, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. You need to get on the straight and narrow, emphasis on the straight. Well, first of all, let me say that sanctification and righteousness as far as I know, studying the Bible, and as far as I know from experience, sanctification and righteousness are part of salvation. It's not some afterthought, not some second blessing. It's a first blessing. When you get saved, you get sanctified. When you get saved, you get righteous. S salvation primarily is sanctification and righteousness. He shall save his people from their sins. The Bible says. He came to bless you and turning you away from your sins, the Bible says. Hell is, is not the primary purpose. To save you from hell is not the primary purpose of salvation. To save you from sin is the primary purpose of salvation. Really to ask, how does the Holy Spirit produce sanctification and righteousness? It's the same thing as asking, how does the Holy Spirit convert sinners? Because what is he converting them from? From sin to sanctification. From unrighteousness to righteousness. You know, I, I, I've never liked the people, this cliche, oh, sanctification is a lifelong process. What do they mean by that? I've never understood what do you mean? Like this year, I'm going to give up lying and stealing, and maybe next year, I'll give up uh, murder and adultery? That's right. You're talking about gangster rap music, aren't you? Gangster rap music promotes black on black crime. 
Yes, gangster rap music promotes drive-bys. Let's ban the hate speech. Let's ban the gangster rap. What are you doing? Ban Tell the them gangster them rap. Tell people are going to hell. Oh. Yes. yes. Show them. Show them. Ban. Ban the hate speech. Burn the Quran. Burn the Quran. Ban hate speech and burn the Quran. Hold on, hold on. You just said the Quran is hate speech. No, no, no. The Quran is hate speech. Ban the hate speech. The Quran says, kill the infidel. The Quran says, kill the Jews, kill the Christians. The Quran says, God of Abraham, you know who that is. The Quran says, you can keep as many wives as you can keep with your right hand. By your right hand. By force, by strength. The Quran is hate speech. Ban the hate speech. Yes. Ban the gangster rap. Ban the Quran. And you know what? No. Let's ban Planned Parenthood. That's a bunch of hate towards babies. Let's ban. Let's ban Planned Parenthood as well. It's a bunch of hate towards babies. Kill babies. Helps women kill babies. Planned Parenthood is worse than the Nazis. Planned Parenthood does not give money to the Nazis. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, I got a question for him. Planned Parenthood has killed more than Hitler did. Really? No doubt. You probably love Hitler. Planned Parenthood has killed more than Hitler ever did. Abortion is a modern holocaust. It's a modern holocaust. We have questions. What's I have a question for you, and I've been trying to ask you for like the last five well, minutes. Well, just let me finish what I was saying about no, abortion. No, you've been going yeah. some bullshit rant about something else. Every time we ask I'll take your question next. No. Abortion is a modern holocaust. Abortionists are worse than the Nazis. Worse than the Nazis. Even the Nazis didn't kill their own babies. What's your question? Why? Are you fucking kidding me? They killed two babies all the time. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Can you all hear me for a second? Can y'all yeah, hear, yeah, yeah. yeah. hear me for a second? Go ahead. You're saying, you're saying ban gangster rap. Okay, do you know that predominantly black people listen to quote unquote gangster rap? That is actually not a title in the what, music genre. Yes. So pretty much what you're being is racist and feminist, right? I thought we're supposed to ban the hate speech, right? I'm just jumping on the bandwagon and saying ban the gangster rap. Can you, I, you said. Can you listen to your fucking question? So why can't country music be banned? Because gangster rap, quote unquote, gangster rap has the same shit. Gangster rap has the same shit that country music has. Hey, I used to be a gangster rapper. You're the whitest fucking white person I've ever seen. I'm not frightened. I used to live the thug life. Yes. I don't bust any rhymes anymore. I got sanctified. It's true. I was living the thug life. I was convicted of my first felony when I was 15. I was facing five to ten years in prison before I cried out to God to save me. Yeah, that sucks that you I was living the thug life. I agree, that sucks. even more. Because I was listening to gangster rap music. I got I got my neck slit in a knife fight when I was living the thug life. See? Yes. Well, music is an influence upon your thought life. Music promotes a philosophy of life. So, because I listen to a certain type of music, I'm going to follow that lifestyle? Well, you put yourself under that influence, you become susceptible. So, the fact that I you listen to gangster rap and worship music at the same time, what the fuck does that mean? Are you a virgin? Why does that matter? Because it matters. Because gangster rap music promotes promiscuity. Excuse, excuse me, I do have a question.
Gangster Rap Music promotes sex before marriage. I bet many of you girls are not virgins anymore. Excuse me, I do have a question. What's your question? So, do you expect me to have, like, my rapist baby or no? You mean your baby. You mean your baby. Yeah, it takes two. So it's it's half yours. It's half yours. Yeah. You know what's worse than being a rapist? You know what's worse than that? Being a baby butcherer. Being a baby murderer. That's what's worse than being a rapist. Listen, girls, girls, if... Your mama should have slaughtered me. Girls, if you get raped and you get pregnant, it's your obligation to have that baby. How are you? You don't mind. You always rape me. It's not if you're... Yes. That baby has a right to your body. That baby has an absolute right to your body. Listen. I have something important to say. I have something important to say. Any of you baby killing whores are going to hell. Any of you baby killing whores are going to hell. But if you repent, you can be forgiven. If you repent, there's mercy, there's grace. Jesus died for baby-killing whores. Jesus shed his blood for baby-killing whores. Because you deserve hell. Now the Bible says Je Jesus Christ has tasted death for every man. Yeah, I can give you a card if you want to. Uh, it's my website, my name, but yeah, it's true. I've authored, well, I've published four books. I've authored about 12. Wow. Um, so well, I'm a, I'm a publisher. I'm my own. I'm a, I, I am a publisher. Well, I'm an author, a publisher, an international speaker, a bookstore owner, website designer, graphic designer, internet marketer. I do a lot of things. You know. No, you guys, you guys are my charity project. This is for free. No offering plate will be passed. No offering plate will be passed. Uh, I am here giving you the gospel for free. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. Providing an alternative to your damnation, a substitute for your Punishment. That's what the atonement of Christ is. So what happens after those three days? After, after he, you know. Well, the Bible says he rose from the grave after three days, and then he ascended to the right hand of the Father. So and now he's coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on those who know not God and on those who obey not the gospel. He's back in flaming fire, so doesn't that mean hell? Because hell is kind of symbol that we made it is fire. He's coming back in fury. He's coming back in flaming fire. Judgment. He's going to burn up the world. So the Antichrist. He's going to burn up the world. Oh, he's coming. You know, Christianity, the advancement of Christianity throughout history is the advancement of civilization itself. It was Christianity that saved Europe from uh, the, the barbaric paganism that they practiced before. It was the spread of, uh, you know, the, the Judeo uh, ethic into uh, the promised land that saved that country from such vile filth, corruption and pollution. It was Christianity that civilized the Vikings. It was Christianity. The spread of Christianity is the spread of civilization. And as Christianity breaks down, civilization itself breaks down. And I, I was, you know, just a quick example. I saw on the uh, news about this issue with cable television taking a big financial hit because so many people are now watching their cable TV illegally, pirated uh, television, you know, through the Internet. Uh, HBO especially has taken a financial hit because uh, people are watching the big games, the boxing matches and whatnot illegally through the Internet. 
And I thought this is ironic because cable television, especially HBO, has been glorifying and promoting illegal activity for years. And now their audience wants to watch their shows illegally. And they're taking a financial hit. You see, a culture of sin is a culture of self-destruction. Not just is Christianity necessary for good economics, or what the Bible calls, you know, a just weights and just measures, just balances. But it's the foundation of morality and ethics itself. So as society drifts away from the light of the gospel on the brink of reprobation, and as society revolts against the order of things and the design of God and the family unit, and it's shrinking and dying as a culture, and then drifts away from the morality of God and the Ten Commandments, it becomes a society of, on a suicide mission. And that's the situation that we find ourselves in. I'm concerned about the state of your soul. Free business card? Well, I, I'm on a budget. He spent all his money on PCP way back keep, yeah. keep your profits up with your expenses down. That's how you do it. Hate! 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 You think that's what I do all day? Just yell hate at college students? Hate! 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 hate. I'm... I'm Preaching the truth of God, the whole truth of God, whether you love it or hate it, reject it or not. The Bible says, the light has come into the world, and the world loved darkness rather than light. The light has come into the world. I'm here to expose your sin. I got a light flashing on your sin. I know many of you are homos. I know many of you are masturbators. I know many of you are whores and whoremongers and baby killers. God knows it too. <laughs> Wait, can you guys hold up the flag right here and just... Christians have the rainbow first. You stole it. Actually, Jews have the rainbow first. That's true. It's true. Just like you guys hijacked the word gay. That used to be a good word. Gay. Gay used to be happy. Now it means pervert. Love does not rip open your neighbor's anus. Love! Love does not rip open your neighbor's anus. That's not love. That's not love. That is hate. 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 Shit! Shit! I know! Never, never, never trust a homo. You know why? Many serial killers have been homosexuals. I Didn't you say you used to have homicidal tendencies? Does that make you a homo? I just read on the news, Fox News, fair and balanced, I just read in the news about a Canadian Santa Claus Homosexual serial killer. Because that was the story. The, the gay community was all mum about it. They wouldn't tell the cops what they needed to know. Yes, a Canadian Santa Claus homosexual serial killer. Are you hallucinating? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Fox News, fair and balanced. You watch Fox News? Yeah, Fox I News. Told you do you know there was Bozo the Clown, the homosexual serial killer? Have you heard of Bozo the Clown? A homosexual serial killer. How about Jeffrey Dahmer, the cannibalistic homosexual serial killer? Yes, he was. Jeffrey Dahmer was drilling holes into the heads of his male victims to create zombies, male slaves. He was a he was a cannibalistic homosexual serial killer. 
Never trust a homosexual. Never, never, never. The good news, Jesus Christ can change your life. Jesus Christ can save your soul. Jesus Christ can make you holy. Uh, that's what you've been doing. Yes, I know. I love it. Yeah. I'm a crazy motherfucker. I'm admitting that shit. You don't have to I'm convince me. Crazy. I'm a believer. I know it. You're here. I don't know why the fuck you're here. You are nuts, lady. You are nuts. Why would anybody not want to repent? If you don't want to repent, you're morally insane. If you want to continue in your sin, you want to hold on to this, you're an idiot. Jesus said, if you hear my sayings and obey them not, you're like a foolish man that builds his house upon the sand. You want to hold on to that sin? What is that sin? That sin is a killer. You know how many people I know that haven't survived their temptations because sin is a serial killer? Sin is responsible for every death in human history. You know how many people die from sin every day? Why would you want to hold on to that? You're morally insane if you don't want to repent. This, oh, that's, that's, just, uh, that's just works. Well, what we need is a change of works. How does that come about? By real repentance and faith. That was the message of repentance was the main message of Christ. He came to call sinners to repentance. He didn't come to tell people God loves you. He didn't come to say, uh, be blessed. He came to call sinners to repentance. That's what he said. It was the main message of the apostles. It says that they went everywhere and preached that men should repent. That's what it says they did. They went everywhere and preached that men should repent. It was the main message of the prophets. Which prophet didn't preach repentance? What church are you guys a part of? <laughs> well, we actually belong to different churches. We're just friends that get together. So we don't have any con... What churches? What organization? Yeah, well, we... Listen... We, we go to the church of you're going to hell unless you repent. You go to the church of you're going to hell? Yeah, yeah, it's called you're going to hell unless you repent, church of Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Where can I go to that church? What church and college station? Where is that? Well, here's, well we, we're not from around here. It. I, it takes a lot of balls to get up and talk in front of a bunch of kids that, you know, think think and, you know, act like they know what they're talking about. I mean, I don't always know what I'm talking about, but I mean, it really takes a lot of guts to be out here doing what you're doing. And I'm, I'm actually like, I was really in, interested and engaged in the conversation. I really did enjoy Good, it. Well, I enjoyed it. Look me up on Facebook. We'll Thank be, you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate God bless you. Jesus loves you. Yeah, well, I'm not, to, I'm not here to promote a church. I'm here to promote Jesus. Um, sin has killed more people than any. Sin is responsible for every death. Sin is responsible for every disease. You should hate it like God does. You know, God hates sin so much, he created hell to punish it. And the, the influence that I was for, for sin, I now wanted to be an influence for righteousness. There had been younger kids that I had influenced that were selling drugs for me or that I sold drugs to. And now I'm witnessing to them and giving them gospel tracts, you know. Uh, walking through my high school with Christian t-shirts on, putting Christian literature in all of the lockers. So when everyone comes out of class and they open their locker, there's some uh, gospel literature for them to read. You know, just like I used to pass out uh, drugs, now I'm passing out gospel literature. So I saw what sin does to people. I saw what sin does to people's lives. I saw what sin was doing to my community. And I saw the power of God and the power of the gospel to reverse the damage that the devil has done. And I just wanted to see everyone have their lives touched and their lives changed and their hearts transformed like I had. So I began witnessing and street preaching, going out into the parks. Uh, there was a, you know, a bus stop that I would preach to in New Haven, Connecticut. And sometimes it would have 50 people waiting for the bus, even up to 100 people waiting for the bus. And there'd just be a little park bench there and I could stand up on the bench and read the Bible to them and witness to them and share my testimony with them. And I saw fruit out of that park. I saw the drug dealer in the park got saved. That was an interesting story. She said after I preached to her and told her about hell and, and she said to me, she said, well, if what you're saying is true, then I'm on my way to hell. And she had tears going down her face and I said, but you don't have to. You don't have to go to hell. And I preached to her the gospel. 
and called her to repent of her sin. Well, I didn't see her for months after that. I used to see her every day. I'd go to the park to preach every day. And she, I never saw her after that until months later she came up to me. And she said, remember that, that day that you preached to us? I said, yeah. She said, that night I had all my drugs stolen at gunpoint. She said, when that man pulled that gun on me, put the gun in my face, she said, I thought that's it. I'm going to die. God sent a preacher to come and preach to me and I didn't listen and now I'm going to go to hell. So, but he didn't kill me. He took all my money, took all my drugs and I... And uh, I called up the guy I was working for and I took this as my escape. I told him I was done. He wanted to give me more drugs to sell. I told him I'm done. And I went back home to my mother. She raised me in church, she said. And, uh, and I start, I've been going to church with my mother and reading the Bible every day. She says, my life has been so changed and so transformed that the government who took my children away from me now want to give them back. Amen. I'm not here to give you hugs and kisses. I'm here to tell you the Bible. I'm here to tell you the Word of God. I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you what Jesus said. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. You birds will not inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. You need to be sober-minded, the Bible says. God hates your sin. Stop being a disappointment to God. Stop being a disappointment to God. You're a disappointment to Jesus Christ. You're a disappointment to your maker. Every day that you sin, every day that you live in rebellion and wickedness, you're breaking the very heart of God. Stop sinning, all of you! Stop sinning now! Stop being a sinner! Stop being a homosexual! Stop being a whore! Stop being a whoremonger! Stop being a drunkard! God is calling all men everywhere to repent! Because he's appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness by the man Jesus Christ. Yes, rebellious women who don't want to submit to their husbands. But yes, it's so obvious that there's a God. You plug your eyes, you, you close your eyes, you plug your ears. When the existence of God is so obvious. You're, you're, you're proof of the mind of God. You're proof of the intelligence of God. Every part of your body has a function. Every part of your body has a reason. Every part of your body has a use. What's your question? What is your reason for telling me that I'm going to help you if I'm Okay. No, I don't want you to scream. I want you to speak to me, please. Why? She wants to know, why do I say she's going to hell because she's gay? Because homosexuality is a satanic rebellion against the creation of God. As a woman, you have ovaries. You have ovaries. Yeah, God loves every sinner in hell. No doubt about it. God loves every sinner in hell. But listen, do you know why God gave lesbians ovaries? God gave lesbians ovaries because God wants you to be impregnated by a man. That's why lesbians have ovaries. So homosexuality is rebellion against the institution of God, the family unit. It's an assault on the family that God intended for man. I'm going to heaven because I've been forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. I've turned away from my sins. I've committed my life to Christ. I'm covered by His mercy and His grace. And there's hope for you. There's hope for you. No, I'm here to help you. That's why I'm here. Yes, I'm here to get you on the straight and narrow. Emphasis on the straight. You, you want to get on the straight and narrow. You know, there's a cultural inheritance. Uh, I was recently, I, I traveled, you know, to the Philippines and I, I taught moral government there at a small little YWAM uh, base. But when I was, you know, traveling through the Philippines and I, I saw the, the contrast and the difference between, you know, America 
as a, a leading nation in the world and, and the Philippines, uh, which is, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a more poor country, uh, poverty, there's nice homes and there's very not nice homes. There's, you know, like when you go to Mexico and you still have people living in like what we would consider just sheds or shacks, you know, not much. And there's places like that. And it made me think of, of a cultural inheritance that we have. You know, not only do you inherit things from your parents, if they have anything, uh, but you inherit things just from, uh, from your society that you're born into. You know, I, I, I have a home that was built in the 70s. Well, that, that was, you know, I wasn't even around then, and I certainly didn't build it myself. That was a previous generation. You might live in a home from the 50s. I think Brother Jed might live in a home from the, the 20s or 30s. It's older. Okay, that's an inheritance from a previous generation. Well, America is still riding on the prosperity of our ancestors. And when you get that foundation that they had, which was the foundation of their prosperity, which was Christianity, and you take that foundation away, the prosperity upon which it was built cannot stand. And America is still prospering off of the inheritance of our ancestors. But they only had that prosperity because of that foundation. And it won't stand. A house without a foundation will crumble, will fall. I think I got, I got, I got hundreds of college students to think about God. Mission accomplished. To get college students thinking about God. You've been thinking about God, what up, God, talking about God. Neurologically, God is a thought that just won't go away. Yes, sir. I just arrived here, so I'm a little neutral. What do you think about the, the fact that the Bible is something that's been mis mistranslated, retranslated, and rewritten, added upon by American people over time for hundreds of years, and that to take it so literally might be the wrong thing to do? Yeah, I don't think the Bible has no, been just back. translated and translated and translated and translated. No, we translate it from the original Greek and Hebrew. Yes, but that's it's not, it doesn't go from Greek and Hebrew into Latin, into Aramaic, into Russian, into Ukrainian, into American or English. We, we translate it straight from the originals. I read the Greek, a little bit of the Hebrew. I can tell you the, the King James Bible is, is a great translation. Well, five to six thousand years. I have a question. Yeah. Dinosaurs are. Uh, dinosaurs went extinct because maybe they were gay. Dinosaurs are gay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry there. Now, if the Earth was older, there'd be more dust on the moon. The only reason they say billions of years is to give enough time and chance to Darwinian. Bio, uh, biology evolution because you have to have billions and billions of years to have enough time and chance to magically evolve without God you know hey you know you have the signature of God in every cell of your body you have you have a genetic code in your DNA and the only known source of intelligent information is an intelligent mind you are the product of the intelligent mind of God I have a question yeah what shape is the earth round flat it's a sphere oh okay wait we're like one for five that's pretty good that's what the bible says Long before science discovered it. You jerk me off. Yeah. Where did Where did DNA come from? Suck a dick. Where did the genetic code come from? The dick. Well, neither am I, but I can tell you the only known cause of intelligent information is an intelligent mind. What came first? Protein or protein synthesis? Well, you can't have protein synthesis without protein, but you can't have protein without protein synthesis. It's a closed system within the cell. It's, it's God creating ex nihilo. God creating out of nothing. It's the only way. 
because you can't have the, the dynamic uh, activity of the cell, the creation of protein, without these machines that are already made out of protein. You have to have a creationism. You have to have a design. Problem is, you people would rather watch your porno than to read the Bible. You'd rather, you'd rather go to some, uh, what? You'd rather go to some, some music concert. Who's popular now? Lady Gaga. You guys listen to what? Miley Cyrus. Who are you watching? You know, you'd rather go to some rock concert than a Bible study. Next question. Evolution. Why are you Evolution is a lie. It could not make your eye. Life from life is all we see in all humanity. Evolution is a lie. It could not create the eye. I have a question. No, you can't have a single cell without a genetic code. And a genetic code is an intelligent arrangement of these biological chemicals that can't happen by mere time and chance. You and the ugly ass best are gonna fucking perish. It's gonna all disintegrate. You were gonna die. Atheists are ostriches with their head in the sand. They say, God, I can't see you. God, I can't hear you. Oh wait, is God saying something? God, I can't hear you. That's what the atheist is like. We love the chicken. Yo, have you ever heard of auto erotic? Everything is proof of God. Oh, have you ever heard of Bukaki? You cannot have the infinite, or the finite, without the existence of the infinite. The only, no, the first cause had no beginning because everything that had a beginning had a cause. The only thing that qualifies as the first cause is the self-existent, that which had no beginning, that which is infinite. The absolute proof of the infinite is the existence of anything finite. An atheist is proof of God. But America has been grieving the Holy Ghost. America has been grieving the Spirit of God. And what does he say? His Spirit will not always strive with men. He's been striving since the beginning in Genesis. But he's still striving today. The devil still has got fight. The, the, the Holy Spirit still has fight in him. And you know that when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you got fight in you to go fight the devil, go fight the sin, go fight the darkness. I remember the first time I wanted to go out to my high school to witness. And I just felt the Holy Spirit within me, so eager, so excited, so enthusiastic. Because we're going on the devil's territory to pick a fight with the devil. Preach the gospel and save souls from hell. So the, devil's, the devil is still advancing. The devil still has fight in him. And I believe the Holy Spirit still does too. To save our nation and turn things around. God gave you your musical talent and you use it to disrupt the preaching of his son. God gave you your musical talent and you use it to disrupt the preaching of his word, the preaching of his truth. Shame on you. Shame on you. You're just a big blowhorn. That's all you are. Just a big blowhorn. Yeah, we're just in the road for him to get by. Now, once I get the permit through here, I'll figure out if the permit allows you to be here or not. If you're not allowed to be here, you won't get this from that. Yeah, no, we have a permit. It's called the Constitution. The permit allows the event to be here. We're always allowed to be here. We're taxpayers. We own this tree. Yeah. We own it. I know more about the law than you do. Okay, go kart. Have a good day. God's law, that's for sure. God's gonna burn you in hell. God's gonna burn you in hell, sinner. You're in for a rude awakening. You're in for a rude awakening. Yes, you're in for a rude awakening. 
you're going to die. You're going to stand before God. You're going to account for your life. I shot myself in the head. You need to get ready. You, God gave you grace and mercy so you could repent. Don't squander your second chance. I did not squander. Don't squander your second chance. You're wicked and wrong. Wicked and wrong. I wouldn't want to be you on Judgment Day, go kart. I wouldn't want to be you on Judgment Day, go kart. Mr. Gokart said he likes to have sex with grandmas. That's how wicked he is. Mr. Gokart said he likes to have sex with grandmas. Wrinkly old grandmas with denture teeth. That's what he said. This event is not nice. This event is sin! 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 Sin, S-I-N, sin. This is not a nice event. This is an event full of sin-loving God-haters. Yes, sin-loving God-haters. You're out here to get drunk, wearing your short shorts. Are you a virgin? Are you a virgin? It is my business. I care for your soul. You people are trading your soul for the pleasure of your sin. You're trading your soul for the pleasure of your genitals. Trading? Yes, that's what you're doing. You take better care of your genitals than you take care of your soul. That's a shame, shame, shame. I'm not here to call you to repent. 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 That means change your mind about sinning. Make up your mind to sin no more. Turn away from the sin of unbelief. Turn away from the sin of your pride. Turn away from the sin of your self-righteousness. Turn away from the sin of your mockery. Turn away from the sin of your drunkenness. Turn away from the sin of your whorishness. Turn away from all your sin. And turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. He conquered the grave. He conquered what Alexander couldn't conquer, Caesar couldn't conquer, Napoleon couldn't conquer, Hitler couldn't conquer. Jesus Christ conquered the grave. And the only hope you have is that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And He's offering you eternal life. He's offering you the forgiveness of sin. If you would just repent of your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, sanctification doesn't have to take a lifetime. It can take a second. Because sanctification simply means being set apart from sin and dedicated to God. And the moment that your will submits to God without compromise, without holding on to anything, a full and total entire submission of your will to the will of God, that's sanctification. That's righteousness. It can take a second. Like Brother Jed was talking about these people that will come to the altar and pray for, oh, 30 minutes or an hour, and now they say, I'm sanctified. Why did it take them so long? 30 minutes? It can take you a second. Just submit your heart and your will and your life to the, to the will of God. Sanctification, entire sanctification, also known as Christian perfection, is nothing more than obeying God to the best of your knowledge and the best of your ability. And that happens when you're converted from sin to righteousness, from disobedience to obedience, to repent of your sin. When you realize sin was stupid, how could I be so stupid to do that? I never want to do that again. You change your mind about doing it. You make up your mind to do it no more. Now maturity, maturity is a process. Growth in grace, growth in knowledge. There's no growth in obedience. You obey or you disobey, but you grow in your knowledge. You grow in your light as you study the Bible and study the Word. When I got saved, I didn't know there was a great commission. I knew Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I knew sin was a bad idea and I was so stupid for doing it. And I repented of my sin and I trusted in Christ for His mercy and grace through His cross. I didn't even know there was a great commission until I read it in the Bible. 
Of course, I naturally shared my faith. God had done such a wonderful work in my life, and I wanted him to do wonderful work in everyone else's life. I mean, evangelism came natural. I saw my life was, was uh, blessed by God because I had repented of my sin, and my friends were still in the misery and curse of sin, and I wanted better for them, so I witnessed to them. But you grow in your knowledge. You grow. Maturity is a lifetime uh, process. I hope to think I'm more mature now, 17 years after I was converted, than I was as a new believer. My knowledge has matured. My understanding of the Bible has matured. But my obedience these 17 years has been the same. I've had the same attitude since the very beginning. God, whatever you want for my life, I just don't want to serve the devil anymore. I don't want to walk in the darkness anymore. I want to walk in the light. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Go wherever you want me to go and say whatever you want me to say. I want to be a force for good in this world. My attitude since the very beginning as a new convert has been the same. God stands for righteousness, holiness, purity. And every day that you choose to be a sinner, every day that you choose to sin, you align yourself with the devil. You're joining the devil's war against God. You're marching with the devil straight to hell. You need to come out of the darkness today into the marvelous light of Christ Jesus the Lord. Come out of the darkness today into the marvelous light of Christ Jesus the Lord. The Bible says, He that sins is of the devil! Now going out onto the streets, you see a lot of opposition from the very beginning because, well, I used to be a servant of the devil and he's not happy that I left his ranks. And ever since, he's been, uh, you know, trying to give me a hard time. And so I've had times where I was uh, assaulted. I've been punched. I've been kicked. I've been egged. I've been pied. I've been falsely arrested. I've had to preach inside a jail cell uh, because they wouldn't let me preach on the street. And so I just preach it in the jail cell. Uh, there's opposition. There's hostility. You know, when you read the book of Acts, that what you, that's what you should be seeing today. We have the same gospel, it's the same Holy Spirit, and it's the same devil. It's, it's the, it should be the same as you see in the book of Acts. People say, well, why don't we have persecution in America? I said, what are you talking about? I know, the, I know persecution in America. If you're preaching a biblical message, if you're preaching a biblical gospel, you will have biblical persecution. I, I know street preachers who, at least uh, two of them, who have actually been killed out on the streets. Now, I've been out on the streets now uh, for 15 years, uh, out preaching on the streets. I've never been killed yet. I know the day might come. I pray, you know, God, if, if I'm going to be a martyr, I pray, uh, I pray it's when I'm an old man. You know, after I raise my family, after I raise my kids, I don't mind being a martyr. I don't mind dying for the Lord. It's the best way to go. It's better than a heart attack because you ate too many cheeseburgers, you know? Like, it, it's, it's better than a car accident because someone was drinking and driving. You know, I'd rather die for the Lord than die from bad health. But when I'm old, after I raise my kids, you know, like uh, Ignatius was an old man when they, you know, tried to burn him at the stake. So I'll go that way, Lord. So the Bible says, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God is concerned about every nation. God is concerned about every people. Yes. Jesus died for the white man. It's true. It's true. It's true. Jesus, Jesus died for the white man. It's true. Jesus also died for the black man as well. Jesus died for the black man too. Hey, Jesus died for the Chinese man as well. Jesus even died for the Canadians. Yeah. Jesus... Jesus even died for the Mexicans. God wants the Mexicans to go to heaven too, but he's not going to let them go illegally into heaven. He's not going to let the Mexicans cross the border of heaven illegally. You have to go by the blood of Jesus Christ.
You have to go through the cross of Jesus Christ. There is only one way you can be saved. The blood of Jesus Christ. Not through Muhammad. Not through Buddha. Not through Krishna. The only way you can have your sin forgiven is by the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching our video. I pray that it was a blessing to your life and that you were edified and encouraged by it. Please be sure to like it and leave a comment. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends. I've been traveling the country for over 14 years, taking the gospel to the lost, to those who need it the most, because America is in big trouble and is in need of the gospel more than ever before. All it takes to bring me to your area is a plane ticket and a couch to sleep on, and uh, we could preach together or I could preach in your area. But please be sure to keep us in your prayers. We're in need of prayer partners who will get behind us as we're doing battle on the front lines and the devil comes against us. We need Christians who will pray daily for us and for our ministry. And so would you consider becoming a prayer partner with us? Also, we live by faith as a missionary family. We don't know every month where our support's going to come from, but God puts it on people's hearts and he's faithful to provide. And so if God puts it on your heart to bless our ministry and to become a financial supporter, you can do that if you go to our website, openairoutreach.com. So God bless you guys.